Stand by. I mean, Are I, you out of your mind? Like Here's the debate. Crushers, You're upset. Them. They're saying we believe you. That's it? I, I thought, uh... Go on. It's, it's like when you buy stocks or Bitcoin or We're crypto lying. or anything with somebody else's money that they lend you. And you get a margin call like, shit, how do I pay this back? It's not a good situation. Lots yeah. of people are going through it. Anyways, we are live. Okay, so episode 159. Today's guest is the one and only Brian Callen, uh, famous for man, comedian, movies. The moment he came in, first thing I thought about when I saw him, I'm like, freaking, I'm going back to Hangover. Yeah. The scene out the chair, I can't yeah. get that out of my head. <laughs> you motherfucker. <laughs> That's it. That's it. Right, just to be clear, it's not like he's just quoting you because you're here. He says it. He says it all. The yeah, time. let me tell you. You don't man. remember me. It's well, all the time, bro. We met at Cavalia, which was this horse show. Where yeah. these, these guys can do everything on a horse, men and women on a horse. And <laughs> and I think you you were like, I see this this big handsome guy. I think with this beautiful woman at the time. And you were like, Hey, man, I know you from somewhere. And I, I was used to getting that. I think we talked then. How long ago so was that? Dude, it's got to be 10, 11, 12 years ago. Oh, wow. It was a while ago. It, it literally, that, yeah. yeah. My daughter was very young, so. Yeah, it was a while ago. And I saw like, you got to be kidding me, you know? And then, yeah. obviously, uh, uh, we had Brandon Schaub on, which was great. It was great talking to Brandon. Yep. and He loves you. Yeah, Brandon, we, Brandon also. Who? Yeah. Brandon. He's used to it. He's used to Brandon What I say? Schwab. Brandon? Brandon. Yeah, well, that's your thing. You know, like. People do it all the time. You, Brandon Schaub. You'll call him Brandon. I that's call fine. him Brian. Brand, yeah. Brandon Schaub. Brandon, Brandon Schaub. Brandon with an E. Listen, Mr. Schaub. Is that yeah. easier for you? Let's <laughs> yes, do that. Yes, yes. Like that, how you say Peter Thiel. How Everyone's about the like, guy Peter that Thiel, considers but... you a very uh, uh, athletic individual? A high, uh, uh, yeah. high school Schaub. He took a shot at me. All right, Schaub. We'll get it. We'll see this guy. To the point where he talked. He brought it up. on. He says, I told one of the guys. Yeah. You know, he was talking about one of the guys. Yeah, you know what it was. It. but we're, we're still friends. It is I, what it I is. thought Brendan was a great guest. I think he's funny. <laughs> it is what we, it put, is. We played dodgeball and he can't throw a ball. I said it. I said it out loud. I said wow, it loud. Yeah. Fired. I said it loud. Well, you were telling the story about how he blew out a couple hamstrings. I don't know if you want to throw that story well, out it's, there. Well, it's common. It was on the podcast. Right? You know, I'm yeah. begging him to warm up before he sprints 100 yards since he hasn't done it in 10 years. Oh, and man. he kind of went, now. Nah. To you. <laughs> He gave me that right in the face. Yeah, I'm went, good. The whole well, hands in the face well, thing. Well, because the thing about getting old is you realize the laws of physics, the laws of the universe yeah. apply to you. When you're young and you're like, well, you know, I don't. You, I have this joke about the fact that when you're young, you actually do believe you're one of God's favorites, right? You do. You're, you're like, invincible. Eh, tragedy and loss. It's so sad over there, but I'm just going to keep yeah. waving. You know? Yeah. <laughs> and, and that's why you do crazy things like parkour because gravity, you know, but yeah. nobody in their 40s picks up parkour because. <laughs> You realize, well, the God, there is no, there are no favorites. Yeah, um, you know, and it's it's it's. Really but there true. are though, there are a few favorites. Yeah, uh, you, my friend, <laughs> you. you're you look, you're, the fuck. He's half Assyrian. Right. He's biblical. He's, <laughs> how, are you fifty yet? How old are you? Fifty-five. What have you learned Get about here? Are you really? Get out of Not here. Bad, right? No I mean, shit. What have you learned about tight, stretching? Tight skin. Good for you. Stretching, because stretching, Brendan Schaub did it. Fifty-five. The, take I, your lesson for I, it. I I do. I people laugh, but I actually do yoga every day. But so not, not long. Not really? Yeah, but the, the, yeah. my philosophy is moderation, and I think uh, what I'll do is if I'm going to lift weights, I'll do 20 minutes, but it's intense. I'll do maybe 15 minutes of yoga, not this hour and a half stuff. And I think consistency, and then just learning not to learning how to eat, not getting crazy, not turning into a religion. Let's enjoy our life, please. And and just at the end of the day, moderation, golden mean. I, it, it, people get too crazy. I'm I'm carnivore. I'm keto. I, I just I'm sorry. It's it's too much. It's I don't subscribe I, to that. Well, I got caught last week. I was I was with a girl. I was in the bathroom because I know we we're about to hook up. I was I got caught stretching in the bathroom. She was like, "Why are you <laughs> counting in there?" I was like, "I was like, just shut, just mind your business. Like, yeah. don't worry about it." You're Wait, stretch. you're stretching before? Before, hundred percent. I don't want to pull something during. <laughs> You know what I mean? Well, I you, gotta, did, you did a bit. We went to his comedy show expression. about how, you, like, you. Oh yeah, Hooking sex up. in your twenties is a lot different from sex 40, in your forties. For, well, forties, and I, told, I, I did a bit where I'm like, you know, when you were younger, you could pick the girl up, go on the dresser, and she would throw everything off the dresser. I go, that's hot at twenty. At forty, your whole life is on that dresser. There's antiques. If a girl does that, I'm like, time off. That's my humidifier. <laughs> it's, a picture, it's a picture of my mother. What are you doing, you Adam? <laughs> you out of yeah. your mind? Yeah. What are you doing? It's my own mother. So, so yeah, please yeah. dress her up. You also don't care. I mean, after yeah. a while, it's like, all right, we've done all this. Yeah. A little connection and we'll, we'll move on. <laughs> yeah. how did I, got, the I got 15 minutes. How did the stretching work out for you, though, Vinny? It's, uh, dude, I'm not, because, you know, I'm, I'm 44 years old. 
It worked. I'm just saying, like, when I hook up now, by the little side thing, I have water, a banana. I don't... <laughs> Dude, vitamins, I, Tylenol. I swear, Patrick, I swear to God, when you get in your 40s, you guys, when you're, when you're in your 40s, I don't care. Like, what are you going to do? Make fun of me? I don't yeah. care anymore. If I was 20, I'd be like, what do you... What? Now it's whatever, bro. I'm stretching. Yeah. I have to. I, the whole yoga thing. I have. By the way, that that visual is a little concerning. Yeah. I'm just thinking. <laughs> well, okay, let me do the couple stretches. The I'm coming, babe. You ready? Banana on the. No, no, no. The, 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 the side stretching. Table. The stretching. Well, yeah, as I, she I'm, walks yeah, in. I heard somebody say th they were talking about the Red Queen phenomenon. That idea that you know you have to run as fast as you can just to stay in place, right? Oh, wow. And it's a it's a term that they use sometimes, which comes from Alice in Wonderland, and. Uh, I think when you get to a certain age, that's exactly what happens. You start to accept part of what wisdom might be is coming to terms with your own limitations, coming to terms with the fact that no matter what you do, you are a limited creature, and you are you are no matter what you do, you're probably gonna, you're not going to look as good next year. You're not going to be as strong next year, no matter what. There just comes a time, and you've got to accept the inevitable decline of the body. But I think with that comes um, hidden gifts. Hidden gifts. Such as what? Acceptance, mm -hmm. uh, understanding, wisdom, um, letting go of those kinds of things that you probably shouldn't have been holding on to in the first place and, and, and making room in your mind for other, other efforts and mm. other understandings. How much of that do you think is wisdom? How much of that is the fact that your testosterone level is just lower? <laughs> you know, th this, is, this becomes a question between biology and spirituality, right? <laughs> like, it's so funny. As, as your biology starts, yeah. to, you, you, like, somehow I'm you get so more... I'm so serious. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly it. Like, why, why am I yeah. fighting God now? I'm like, <laughs> That's exactly what happens. You kids, you kids keep no, having sex listen. and dancing. For me, yeah. I'm going yeah. to church. The Lord, the Lord, the, yeah, the Lord is important right now. That's because I'm, I'm afraid I'm going to get to heaven and God's going to have my entire life on one piece of paper like my dad did with my report card. By the way, think about it. If they ran the testosterone uh, you know, levels of people who go to church, what that would look like, like attendance-wise. Probably very low. Tracking data. Yes, yeah, what low. I'm saying. Like, it's like, Great question, dude. It, if I find a church with high testosterone level <laughs> attendees, think about that church right Oh, my there. God. I mean, they're <laughs> sinning every other second. Yeah, oh, that's yeah. you could that's probably, a church you want to go to. Hell yeah, I want to be yeah. at that church. You, you could draw a correlation, I guarantee, to antibiotics, to things that took care of syphilis and other things where <laughs> sex didn't cost you your life and uh, and and also even the pill and all these things that kind of liberate back in the day dude sex was a very risky enterprise you could get some crazy disease you could get pregnant and be banished from society and that so i think you're right i mean there are a lot of things that kind of like god kind of died with antibiotics and birth control to some mm. extent you know? <laughs> very like, true you Welcome wonder to the Church of Callan over yeah, here. Yeah, you wonder how much of this stuff, like how much of it changes because literally you're becoming wiser, how much of it changes because you don't have another choice. Like to let go of that, you know, uh, uh, midlife crisis when some go through, it's like, man, I'm not 32 anymore. You know, I'm not 38 anymore. I'm not, you know, whatever that number may be for some people, uh, uh, you see it a lot. I think like I remember being 28 years old, I meet this guy and he says, uh, you know, 28 is one of the toughest age a man will go through. I said, tell me why 28. He says, because you're close to 30, friends are married with kids, you're no longer close to 20, mm -hmm. you're about to hit that number. Mm -hmm. If you're not married, you're going to be worried. If your career is not said, you have all these types of anxiety and you may make some stupid mistakes at 28. And then you turn 38 and you're wondering if there's this thing when the number switches every single time. Like you go from 39 to 40, from 49 to 50. Did you ever have something like that with you where you're like, yeah, no, it's just my, 40, my, it's just 30, you're just 50? No, my biggest fear was um, regret. And I was afraid. I think one of the most important things, there are two uh, of the most important decisions I think you're making in your life. One is who you choose to spend your life with, right? So if you're going to get married or you're going to uh, bring somebody in your life, that's a very – that decision should be treated with great gravity and 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 i think if in a lot of times you don't get lucky with that it's a tough it's a tough thing but um i think the other thing is to know to learn at a young age and be ruthless with yourself where are you supposed to place your energy and i knew that if i didn't become a comic or an actor i was gonna i was gonna become a small person who didn't like himself how old were you when you knew that i i was 20 i was probably 20 one 
Uh, well, I went um, to college and I said, uh, I'm going to try to be an actor. And then I, I talked myself out of it. I, I did some acting and I said, oh, well, this is very difficult. And I don't know what this means. And there's no linear progression, right? I've always liked linear stuff. Like, if you show me how to get a black belt or you show me how to learn how to play the guitar, if you show me the way, I'm going to do it. And I'll, and I'll figure out a way to get better at it. Because it's know? linear, you just go stri- yeah, run dude, straight. Yeah, put your head it. down and just go. Yeah. I've, 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 I've always kind of thrived in, in routine and practice. I don't have a problem with that. When you have something like acting or stand up and you know Vinny, it's like there's no path, man. You've got to just continue to be you're in the business of what I call original self-expression. But for me, I knew that once I made the decision to become an actor and a comic that I was going to be okay. Because even if it didn't work out, I had the courage to go for it. Mm-hmm. And I think you die a little bit when you you knew the answer. I think you always know the answer. You know, it's like this expression it takes five minutes to fall in love and the rest is denial. And then there's another expression, which is people get divorced after 20 years over what they knew about that person in the first 10 minutes. Mm, wow. mm. And I think it's a very important thing to keep in mind because you know that about yourself. You know, people ask que- me, me questions as I get older and stuff. You know, they want to, they're young men who want questions about life mostly. You know the answer, man. Usually I go, take, take a second. I, do you know the answer to this question? You're just asking me for affirmation. Right. And I, and I understand that. We all do it because it's scary. It's very scary to to actually take a minute and visualize your best self. The, your, the, the hero of your movie. There's a coward of your movie and there's a hero of your movie. And then there's the guy who's just kind of going through his life. And when the gunslinger comes to town, he closes the shutters because he's afraid. We have all of that in us, man. Hmm. But to really look at the best version of yourself, the version of yourself that you would admire, that you would go to a movie to watch, the version of yourself that does the right thing no matter what, that tells the truth and aligns himself with the highest truth or good that he can imagine or or she can imagine. Very scary. Because it requires, it takes responsibility, man. and, And I don't think anybody can get you there. You have to stand on your own two feet. And sometimes it takes a crisis to force you there, you know. Um, but I think it's worth, I really think it's worth meditating on. I think that's, 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 the, that's the North Star all of us should be kind of reaching for. And, and I don't mean just money and status and power. I don't mean just that. I don't think that's enough. I really don't. I, I think it's something else. And I do think, Brian, it's, and, and off of what you were saying, lying to yourself because you once you're true to you, like you said, like when you ask that dude, you know, you know exactly you know. what you're talking about. You know. And I tell people this all the time. I'm not saying be a liar. Bullshit people, bullshit, you know, little white lies that protect people's feelings. Don't lie to you. How, why, why are you lying to yourself? You know you're being full yeah. of shit. Yeah. Once you're honest and you don't give a shit about anybody's concerns, or I mean, it's not easier said than done, when you just don't care, yeah. and you're just being honest, yeah. then you can, you know, live your life. Do you know what I like about this podcast? I hmm. watch this podcast. I don't watch very, very few things. Uh, and one thing I notice about you, it's going to sound really weird, but um, you listen very intently. And, and, I've, I've heard you and I've, I've watched you listen. I've watched you interview pretty formidable people too, some mafia guys or just some very successful people. What I, what I, what I liked about you, and I, I didn't know you, but what I liked about you was that you are genuinely interested. You're curious. That has nothing to do with money. It has nothing to do with anything else. It's you're a driven guy and you're successful, but that's kind of what I'm talking about. You know, there's this, there's this I think it's important to kind of reach beyond yourself Think about how much of our culture reflects directly back to ourselves. Open a magazine. It's all about uh, nutrition, uh, exercise. Mm-hmm. It's all about your biology. All right, dude, I got it. Your hair. I mean, there are ways to do it. But that's not necessarily the answer. There, there are things that part of this whole process of talking and podcasting, what's great is that, man, it feeds your curiosity. It satiates your curiosity. The world is no a mystery. No question about it. So yeah. many, too many things in life are a dark room, and sometimes you get a flashlight and you can look around in there. Yeah. Right? Mm-hmm. So. What a point. By the way, so you, when you were coming up and you are saying 21, you kind of knew. Because, you know, I'm, I'm trying to act on like, I don't want to, if it's kind of weird. And then you're like, I'm going to go give this a shot. I was working. I was a banker. I was at Lehman Brothers. Get out of here. Wow. Yes. yes. What year was 21, this? 33. Uh, right 34. out of college, I was a history major. I bullshit my way into the <laughs> accounts receivable payables department. 
And I just, dude, I was there for 16 months and I was like, I, 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 I just don't care about mortgage-backed securities. I was taking a class and then I kept, I got good REM sleep in that class. Good <laughs> REM sleep. <laughs> I just wasn't my thing, bro. Oh. If you and, cared a little bit more about it, you could have yeah. prevented a 2008 meltdown, I, maybe. Mortgage-backed come securities. Come on, Brian. Brian Cowley. He, he was in. There he looked, is, guys. Bring him in. If I had looked at the tranches. <laughs> when were, were you there late 80s, early 90s? What's I was the there in, uh, yeah, I was there. I graduated 89. I was there 89, 90, 91. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. What a time to be. So, Adam's right. It so, was his and, and fault. I, and <laughs> I tempt, I tempt at uh, Goldman Sachs for almost two years. And uh, I, this is where. Where were you? I was in New York City. In New York City. Oh yeah. So I, I just, I mean, I worked a couple blocks away from the World Trade Center. So, yeah. so, so you know, uh, Goldman Sachs was where I saw back then, dude. That the quality of people they'd get. You'd come in. I would see the resumes. You'd come in. You'd be like a Delta Force guy, sent yourself through Harvard, and you had, you could play the cello, uh, you know, and, and you spoke twenty languages, and they'd be like, you know. What nah? Wow, it was unbelievable. The quality. So of how did you get in? I was a, I was a was an actor. I was ten. <laughs> I was an actor <laughs> writing bad plays, doing stand up, doing whatever I could. Was it your personality that sold it, or no? Like, was it a resume? Because it's not the resume, right? It's the personality. Yeah, did they I meet can, you? I, They're I, like, we like this guy. You know, I can find. I, I find more. I make. Yeah, I figured. Yeah, <laughs> I, I get him laughing. Bro. Yeah. <laughs> who doesn't want to? Who doesn't want a professional jackass around? Yeah. Me, yeah. You know? By the way, that's it, me here. <laughs> just, just so you know, that's exactly how I got my job at Morgan Stanley. Really? I was just gonna just, say. That, Just, about, dude, about let me tell exactly. you. So, you, you know, you, you're talking of uh, uh, Vince Vaughn, and and Vince asks you a question. Good friend so of mine. Good what, friend of the show. The, Vince no, no, Vaughn. on the, I love in the Vince. event that you did, so you're talking to him, and yeah. you say, so tell tell me what are the three? Th he asks you the question. Exactly. What are the three things you say? Well, I was interviewing a lot of models, women, yeah. about what they're looking for in a man, and comes along Vince Vaughn. I'm like, hey, Vince, you want to do an interview? Yeah. Valuetainment, PPD. Oh yeah, I know that. What's up? What's up? So I say, well, you know, you're the famous wedding crasher. What advice do you have for men? Well, you know, here's what I think. And he goes, and, and nobody does this. And this kind of goes to your point of being curious that, and inquisitive. That, he goes, yeah. I don't know, but I see you asking all the women, what are your thoughts? Hmm. I go, thanks, Vince Vaughn. Oh, you know? Well, Vince, and Vince, I, is, and Vince is, I know him a little bit too. And, and, and Vince is, it's also helpful that you're 6'5 and handsome. Yeah, <laughs> extremely. Day, yeah. Yeah. yeah, he's a good looking guy. But he's also a guy who never was a womanizer. He never was, he never, he was out to hang with his boys. Yeah. He, he was driving a cutlass, a cutlass <laughs> at the height of his. You know, Amazing. powers. That guy, Swingers Brian, he was insane. never a womanizer. No, I, I mean, I know, from what I know, you know, um, he was never that guy who was out. I mean, he could, he could find, he'd find a girl in his, in his glove compartment. They, they were hiding everything. Yeah. Yeah, My friends have done movies yeah. with him and they're like, dude, it's crazy. But he never was, uh, he wasn't that guy. He was just, he was more about hanging with his boys. Yeah. That's he's why the people definition was he like of a mensch, mensch? Man. Man. He's was a he a mensch? He's a real Yeah, he's a mensch. Yeah. Yeah. Great guy. He's so anyway, so he, so he asked him a yeah. question. He says, so uh, uh, he says, hey, Vince, you'd be surprised what all the girls are saying is the most biggest turn on for them. He says, what's that? Humor? He says, yep. Getting them to laugh. He said, if you can get them. So with humor, mm -hmm. you can get into so many it's different. It's crazy. It's, it's insane. Because uh, Vinny's I, like, how do you think I get laid out here? <laughs> yeah. By the way, I'm not rich. I'm not in movies. But I just it's just something where, where. And it's weird. Like I mean, I've seen the hottest, hottest girls that are just like, what's some dude? And he's like, he makes me laugh. Well, think Is about, that it? Think about, think about the times, the friendships you have. And the, the, the things you hold on to, the guys you call you've known for 20 years, what is the connective tissue? It's the times you were laughing, man. Mm -hmm. It's You're the right. times you were just, you know, it's like that George Carlin thing, too. It's like there are the times you feel the most alive and you almost forget you're human. One is inspiration. Right, it's like George Carlin said, don't worry about the number of breaths you take, how many breaths, how many, how many breaths are taken, taken away from like, you. How, well, how often are you left yeah. breaths, yeah. right? It's so true because that would mean that's sort of that moment of inspiration. You hear an amazing piece of music, you see an amazing movie, you 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 uh, are are having this moment with your friends where you would rather be nowhere else, or it's an, a moment with a woman where you'd like, I, I, I love this. Whatever those moments are, you forget you're human. So it's like. Laughter, mm -hmm. laughter is intimacy, man. Laughter. If I'm not laughing or learning, get me out of there, bro. <laughs> yeah. Like I'll see you later. I got, I got kids, you know. Yeah, dude, I, I, I'm. We're so aligned there. I mean, it's, it's you. It, it, when you you ever you ever been in a you're shooting the shit with friends. You're at the house. You're smoking cigars. You're at a bar. Wherever you are, and then all of a sudden you're looking at your watch. You're like. 
It's 2.30 in the morning. Exactly. What the hell just happened? How great yeah. is that? Great conversations, great laughter. It's an unbelievable it's high. And add food. Add great oh, food. Oh, that's, a, yeah, that's mandatory. Right? I'm sorry. Yeah, mandatory. I, forgive me I, for forgetting yeah. that because without the food. Because yeah. Yeah. <laughs> my cousin, not to cut you off, <laughs> yesterday I'm, I'm, I'm playing on Twitch, Call of Duty. I stream with Eric Griffin, right? Yeah. So we're playing and my cousin's like, wait, you're we, tomorrow with Brian Callen? He goes, bro, bro please tell him because he had this moment with you and I was there with him. I forgot where you were in LA, either... Brea or somewhere, and I was I was featuring or opening for you, bro. He's he goes, Vinny, tell him that that the Kevin Spacey bit that he did. He goes, I couldn't, and I remember this. My cousin's bald, dude. He he, he turned beat red. He couldn't breathe. He had to run out of had I, run out I of Brea just, improv. I just he, shot that. I just oh, shot my special, my fourth special at the Brea. He cr- he. And that, that moment that you guys are talking about, yeah. Patrick, it was the I. I can't, I'm, like, I'm not gonna give it away because it's gonna come. On come the to the show tonight. So come, I got two shows tonight. Two West shows Palm? tomorrow. West Palm uh, Improv. It's a drive, but I'm, I'm. But if you don't like laughing hard for an hour and ten minutes, don't I come. get it. Yeah. Don't yeah. Come. <laughs> no, I get it. Yeah. Look, if you don't and, like laughing, then, you're like having a good time. This my, isn't for my you. My features are uh, killers too. And Brian, killers. Brian's one of one of the few that I I as a comedian I don't sit in a room and watch. I just don't do it. I don't know. If, I just can't. It's weird. Like when people are like sit sit in the front with us, I can't do it. Yeah. But this cat watching you live, mm-hmm. it's. It's like you're having fun. It's like we're just, we're just in a room and you're just bullshit. Let, let, me, let me ask you a question. So all, you, yeah. all of you have been, uh, 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 com- you were a comedian. You yeah. tried in Colorado. You stepped away into business. You're still a comedian yeah. and you're obviously uh, still uh, uh, performing as well. So what is the difference between today? Because you've been in it uh, 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 90s, 2000s, 2010s, now 2020s. Like, I think about a Justin Bieber, right? How the guy found Justin Bieber. Usher sisters like, oh, look at this guy. Okay, oh, my God, this guy's kids playing some, you know, it was pretty sick. What if there was no Uber? Would we have a Justin Bieber that we have today? I don't know. You see how uh, 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 back in the days, uh, uh, the, the what is the group? Uh, don't Stop Believing. That's, is that Journey. Ju- Journey. Journey. They find that Filipino guy that comes and becomes a lead. So has it, when you see some guys, like, is there a lot of stories of people that just pop up and, oh, they're, they chose to become a comedian, they got a big following, year and a half later, they're comedians, they're getting specials. Is that what's happening today, or was that not the way it was 20, 30 yeah, years ago? I, I, uh, it's a very good question. You know, when I came up, there was no social media. So you were always thrown into a room, and it was in Boston, it was in New York. It was in Kansas. It was in L.A. It was in Bakersfield, wherever it was. You Idaho. Know, right? It was yeah. random. Now, here was the difference. They were strangers who didn't know you. And, oh, by the way, they didn't share a common sensibility. I can do stand-up now in Mumbai or Bombay, and they're going to get the jokes that they get in Los Angeles because the Internet has brought us together. We had, there is this sort of collective consciousness, this neural net, if you will, that we all tap into. Not so coming up. So most of my career, most of Bill Burr's, Rogan's, all of the older guys were, were – we came up in Boston, Pittsburgh with a bunch of working class dudes going, I don't know you. I work for a living. Make me laugh. And it got quiet quick if you didn't bring the money. If you didn't bring the money and you were doing your esoteric stuff, That's so if you were up in Canada and then you came down to Miami, I promise you it's a different group. And if you're up there doing your stuff now, now what's happened is you can curate your own audience. Mm -hmm. You have people that have been listening to you on a podcast forever. So you have your fans are there and they're there. It's like your family. They're already laughing because they just want to have an experience with you. But the pressure is not the same. So so. I think in many ways, I'll take heat for this, but I think in many ways that's not so good for comedy. I agree with you 100%. Yeah. It's diluted because now, I, I think I told Patrick earlier, if you just make a TikTok video and you have you know millions of followers, like you said, they'll come watch you. They'll pay the ticket yeah. and go, you'll fill up a theater. Yes. And it's not it's diluted comedy. To me, Brian, this yeah. is me. Don't I'm not and I hate when people go, oh, you're hating or the hustle. I didn't I didn't say none of that shit. What I'm saying is he came up before me, but like you had to go to these rooms and you had to fill like it was word of mouth. Mm-hmm. Like you became dope because you people did, talked you did, about you around the country. You did legacy media, right? That's you'd go it. and do the the radio tour in the morning. All of us did. No, I don't care who you were. Yeah. And also, nobody was making money. You got to remember that now comics are making money. So, so let me ask you: You didn't so make money back today. Then. Uh, uh, who is a like a real, real OG comedian? Even if you were to take out social media. So take out, they have Bill no Burr. follow. 
Okay, so Bill yeah. is one. Yeah. I can listen awesome. to Bill all day long. Sebastian Maniscalco. I, we had him on last year at the event. Yeah. He was yeah, a was freaking amazing. A Dove Davidoff doesn't do comedy as much anymore, but a monster. Beast. Mm -hmm. You know, yep. Sam Tripoli. No, he doesn't, you know, people don't know what a monster. You can put Sam Tripoli up anywhere, anytime. He'll do an hour and then do a whole new hour. And he can do the most <laughs> offensive shit or the or the greatest stuff. You He just chooses. You know, there are guys like that that Pull came up, up doing Sam nothing Tripoli. but stand up. Oh, Sam is dope. Um, yeah, Sam but there's so many guys. Vinny's f a phenomenal. Have you seen? I mean, there are a lot of guys who are just who who can get up there and crush a room and anywhere it is. So I was if I had known Vinny was here, I know that I could take Vinny and put him up anywhere in the country. Thank you. And he's gonna he's gonna oh, in, for, he's gonna take thirty minutes and crush that room. Mm -hmm. I can tell you who he is because he came up the right way. So you know, but but any of the old guys, Rogan. You know, Joe's Joe was doing Joe was see people don't realize this either. And I've known I've known Joe since I was 28, 27. Joe was crushing. You've never seen anyone, and I'm gonna say you've never seen anyone crush a room like he did when he was 28, 29, 30, 31, 32. He would get up anywhere. I don't care if it was Mars. <laughs> and that dude Light he, it had up. A, he had a he had a bit about two tigers having sex. <laughs> dude. <laughs> I can't even. It would. It would bring the house down. <laughs> it would bring the house down. He would melt it. Good luck following him. Yeah. Good luck. I don't care who. I saw the biggest comics in the world try to follow that. It was like, oh no, no, no. The oxygen's gone, guys. The oxygen's. I gone. watched him in Jacksonville. He invited me. I went up there in Jacksonville. Listened to him. I felt like I had an ab workout. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, I was like, he, he, and that's now. But back then, he was just doing. Now he's trying to say things. Now yeah. it's like there's a through line. There's a theme. Yeah. Back then. It was just, I'm going to, I'm going to, that's all we, so we would get up and it was just, all it was, was I want to see if I can, th this is when you knew you were killing it. If you could do an hour and a 15 minutes and nobody got up to go to the bathroom, that's when that's you know you're crushing. Mm. That for me, that was, that's my, that's still my barometer. Like I'm looking, I'm going, if I can keep these dudes, if I can kill these guys for that long without anybody, and then then you know you did your job because when you're done, they stay all wrong. No, no bathroom they don't, breaks. They don't, don't want to miss set. anything. That's when you're doing. Brian, your job. let me ask you though, because I had Mark Norman here um, on, on my Mark's podcast. Mark's great. Mark's great. But now again, Mark is a real comic, and and Mark was not on social media. Mark exactly. is a guy who came up doing five sets a night in New York City. Yes, and that's my question is because yeah. I even asked him because he's been Stefano. On, he's been on Rogan multiple Killer. times. Mark Norman, yeah. right? Killer. And I said like, would you? want what rogan's got i don't want all that drama i, I don't want 100 million bucks i just want to do comedy that's all i, I just want to be a comedian yeah but we talked about basically you know the Callens of the world the rogan's of the world have been doing comedy professionally for 20 plus years pre-social media and basically kind of like the tiktokers of the world uh, yeah. and i think this guy's funny trevor wallace but like you know basically tiktok instagram influencers and ultimately my question is is uh the barrier to entry the barrier to entry was so freaking great when yeah. you started. You had to compete and compete yeah. and be the best comedian in your city. In your city, yes. and then go from the, now the barrier to entry is but you can care. edit and do a video. I don't care. It, that, that never bothers me. I love that people are able to make money now and stuff. I never worry about that stuff. It's like for me, it's like boxing, okay, or fighting, okay. You might hit mitts really well, dude. That's mm -hmm. great. You might even jump around a gym with a bunch of non-boxers, and you know you're okay. The, the, you go to a boxing the boxers who are in it boxers or mma guys who spar and who are at the top of the game who who can adjust hey that has to be earned mm -hmm. you got to do it wrong for a long time before you do it right they know it and everybody else around them knows it you know it's like uh, whoever like that's why eddie hearn all due respect to jake um paul i i, I, I respect yeah. him i think this kid is actually I mean, you can you you can criticize him all you want. He and his brother are hardworking guys. They work really hard, and it, hey, they're putting themselves in there. You get in the ring and stuff. Mm -hmm. Now, now, Jake, I promise you, in, knows. Well, that's why when he has these conversations with Eddie, Eddie's like, "I got guys that'll light you up." Well, okay, yeah, because those guys have been throwing a right hand since they were seven. Yeah, the, 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 you know. So there are no shortcuts in life. There are no shortcuts in life. That's that's. If I read a self help book, please buy it. It's going to be probably one page. <laughs> it's going to be one page. It's going to say, it takes forever. <laughs> it takes forever. You know, Put I'll in the work. Sign copy, years. Brian Callen. And do it every day. Yeah. It's true, though. I mean, it, it, it's true when you, when you think about that. But today, what, what's... Uh, and again, I don't know if it's the same as it was before. Did comedians have as much influence as they do today, 30 years ago? 
because of social media, has a comedian now had more influence than they did 30 years ago? So if go back 30 years ago. Who was the face 30 years ago? Eddie who Murphy. Who was the, okay, Eddie Murphy. George Carlin. I mean, George Carlin George is my Carlin. favorite of George all George Carlin, time. me too. And he progressed. That's my favorite. Yeah, and he started, you Richard know. Pryor. So would, but would you say they had the same amount of influence, if not more than today, or is today's top, like, like take today, Chappelle. Yeah. Does Chappelle have more influence today than Eddie Murphy had in the 90s? I, um, I do think he does because... But, but but again, entertainment uh, has been so atomized. You know, I mean, social media is about getting your attention. There are so many different avenues. You're competing with so many different ways to. Mm. And I I think that think about this for a second. Like music, let's just take music. Music has become more of a consumption. It's become something that you would digest. You you listen to while you're driving, and then you're waiting for the next tune. It's so now you've got Doja Cat, you've got these different people that have, you know, good for you music. knowing the, the hits, these yeah, days, yeah, you know? yeah. You know, I'm, I'm young, <laughs> but but um, I, I, I don't know that I don't know that I, any musical group, maybe Kanye is an exception, I don't know, but like the influence or the impact something like Led Zeppelin had, mm -hmm. um, or Lenny Bruce had, or uh, George Carlin had when. When the collective mind was focused on four channels, there exactly. wasn't that much expression. You had to also earn. You had to earn so much of of the experience. You had to wait mm -hmm. for that right time. Turn the TV on. You couldn't miss it. Hurry up! Hurry up! It's starting. You know, it was that. It was that mm. thing. There was no recording or yeah. anything. So when you watched it, you got to watch it once usually, and it had such an impact on you. What's the what's the uh, Tyler? What is that article? Did we read that article uh, a couple months ago, or maybe I read this, where it said as popular as Tucker is today, fifty years ago there was a personality in U.S. that had you know seventy five million listeners on a daily basis because there was only four channels. Did you mm -hmm. did you did we read well, that I'll article? You, or no, let me, I don't think it was on here. No, not Cronkite. I'll give you, no, no, I'll give you an name. example with yeah. myself. Yeah. In two thousand one, two thousand, I was doing a TV show. Um, I think it was 2000, 2001, two, whatever it was, and uh, Inside Schwartz. When I was doing the Goldbergs, that was a hit for ABC. It was mm -hmm. the biggest show on ABC. I think maybe six million people would listen, watch it. That's that was their number one. I think uh, TV it was show. the it Goldbergs was. with Jeff. So, uh, so that Garland? was yeah, that yeah. was six million people. Okay, I did that show for almost seven years. Then I did a spinoff with my character, and we probably got five and a half, six million people. That was a big deal. That was a hit, right? When I did in 2001 or two, I did a show called Inside Schwartz, which was getting, I think, 15 million, 15.5 million people to watch, maybe more. Mm -hmm. We got canceled because it wasn't enough. Yeah. Right? Wow. So At back 15 then, million? Oh, yeah, dude. Because friends and Will and Grace were getting, you know, 25, 30. So it, 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 that just wasn't enough for the network. They were like, oh, no, we got other shows. So that's how mm -hmm. we were so, we were so, focused on one thing and that's the that's the biggest challenge i think in many ways for us as a society even think about how christianity in the united states was almost like the focal point of our ethics our morality mm -hmm. our justice system mm -hmm. the way we related to each other in god we trust you said prayers in school that was never controversial even though there was this notion of separation of church and state it was still a christian nation quote unquote Try saying that now. So, so now we, there are just there's no fixed point of truth. I think there's no fixed point of uh, attention, mm -hmm. and that comes with great things, but also its own challenges. So, to Pat's question, so, I so, think, that was a long way of answering. No, no, I think I, I think you're saying that basically, thirty years ago, the top comedian or the top voice, or whether it's the Walter Cronkite of the world, did have a bigger voice. I mean, think about it. How, if in the 90s, how honored would you be to go on Johnny Carson? Oh, my God. Did you ever go your, on? It would like, change your whole life. Yeah, overnight. If you go, I did Letterman. Overnight, Letterman. dude. Yeah. If you go on Jimmy Kimmel today, does anyone give to no. you? No, no, no. no. It, does, it does nothing for your career. That's the oh, yeah. point. Yeah. That's the point. Yeah. yeah I, I, so I, but I do think that having said that, the, the world is also pretty polarized. So it might be atomized, but it's also polar. We got teams, man. We got Wokistan. We got Trumpistan. And then we got a lot of us in the middle who are kind of like, hey, dude, I'm, I'm not with this insane, this gender Nazis. I don't even know what they're talking about. I just want to, I believe in the free market. I like to own my guns, but I don't want spree shooters. We, you know, most of us are kind of mm -hmm. like trying to get mm -hmm. through life. And I think when you have a guy like Dave Chappelle, 
who comes along and says, hey, man, I'm all for equality. I'm a black guy. I get it. But <laughs> you guys are crazy. <laughs> and then you get, a, you get a small pocket of those people who are like, they're not interested in equality. They're just like, how dare you? And everything else. You know, so it may seem like he's, but he has influence. He's he's who we're talking about. Why? Because he took on the transgender thing, right? It, so is it tougher to compete today the, or them? Because the way I see it is, uh, it was a monopoly back then because back then it had a lot to do with who you knew. Like you had to kiss a lot of ass to move up back then. Today, it's so noisy to probably make it today's got to be, it's got to be, it's a different kind of a hard. I, I, I guess yeah. the hard back then was connection. The hard today is if you're not good, you ain't going to last too long if right. you're not good. Yeah. If you're good and you put in the work, eventually the market's going to, you know, Signal pick you noise, up. Yeah, right? something's going to happen. Yeah. But well, do, there's but that cult of the amateur, right? What I like about today, actually, though, with social media is that you've got a lot of comics from all over the world, man. you got a lot of brown comics. you got killers coming out of the Middle East, killers coming out of India, killers coming out of Pakistan. My, my One of the guys who's going to open for me who's going to do a guest spot is from Pakistan, killer. And and th there is a whole there is a whole artistic movement coming out of that part of the world. And they don't have to speak. They can speak Urdu. They can speak Hindu. They don't have to speak English. And they have a massive audience and they're crushing it. And then some of them are, you know, their parents went to England and they're coming in and just taking over. So it's competitive, bro. You're competing with the world, dude. Big time. But, but going off what you said, I don't think you have to be, and this is a fact, you don't have to be really good anymore mm -hmm. because they're still going to come watch you because of the following. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's why I was saying that it's been tainted because they're not, dude, off of what you said, to get another one of you or a Joe Rogan or or one of these big names, I, I don't see, unless they're going to come like diamond in the rough and because they're just mm -hmm. putting out you, special, I, special. His buddy, uh, 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 what's his name? Uh, Marcelo? Marcelo. Marcelo Hernandez. Marcelo yeah. Hernandez, 20, what is he, 23, 24? Yeah, 24. Oh, we saw him, right? Yeah. yeah. Young yeah, guy. Funny. Super character. talented. Hilarious yeah. character Super guy. talented yeah. and witty. I, I think He I opens th for uh, Tim Dillon. Oh, great. Yeah. yeah, you know, Patrick, listen, a lot of times we might be talking like old guys. You know, let me tell you something. When you get to a certain age... You get over 40, what you start doing inevitably is we go, you know, these young guys, they just don't come up the yeah. way we did. Yeah. They, they're not grounded. Yeah. They don't, we, and I think that's been a phenomenon since I had a history teacher who read uh, the lament of an older man about these kids who are materialistic, don't know the meaning of hard work. It was a guy in ancient Rome talking about the youth. Of, and it was, it was such an eye opener. I went, yeah. dude, I'm falling into this trap, right? So... I think to your point, I'm glad you brought it up, is is great artists, people who are intelligent, who have an original way of looking at yeah. things that hold your attention, they'll always be there. And that's what's that's what's beautiful about stand-up. The, the idea is, the idea is, you know the, how you opened it up when you said everybody thinks they're special, but, you know, we're just regular people. And then I said to you, there are some people that think they're really special, right? So th th this this thing right here is yours. Right? Nobody else has got this. This is yours. This, maybe you can change it nowadays to look like whoever you want to mm, look like because, sure. you know, advancement is solid. But this is you, right? Mm. So a kid who's coming up was like, dude, you have no idea how bad I want the world to know what I, I'm special. There's something different about me and everybody else. Dude, that energy, if it's real for that person and it's that important, the world is eventually somehow somewhere going to hear about who this guy is or this yeah. gal is. Somehow, some way, the next great ones are around the corner. We have no clue who they are. I just wonder if the world you're because I'm fascinated by comedy. My whole family, we grew up. I was one of the biggest pranksters in the army. Some of the <laughs> pranks I've pulled till today, they talk. Were about. you in the army? I was in the army, man. We were like not the pranks I pulled. <laughs> Eighty percent of them are inappropriate. I mean, someone's gonna one day tell these pranks that I did. You're right? Canceled. It, it's it's it all would be it's at coming. the highest level. Like if some of this stuff was was just. Which is terrible, but back then it's just like, listen, you're you're in the army, you're doing what you're doing because they right. did it to you, and now you're doing it back to sure. the new guys Easy. that are coming. I grew up in a family, Middle Eastern, Armenian, Assyrian, sarcasm, jokes, shots. If you couldn't handle being a Bed David or a Bogosian, <laughs> you change your last name to something else. Bed David. It was a Bet very, Bogosian. very, be more very, Armenian. Yeah. Than yeah. I mean, you couldn't. It was a difficult place to be, and then and then that continued in high school, and then it continued in the army where. We had a crew. 
So guys were like, hey, can I go party with you guys? Nashville, I want to go to Connections. I want to go to Mix Factor. I was going, they're like, dude, I'm telling you, I don't think you can hang with us, right? And then they would come and hang and say, I was like, oh my God, you guys are ruthless. Yeah, that's kind of how, just that's Where'd how Where did you we, grow up? Yeah, I grew up in uh, LA. I grew up in Glendale. Yeah, right, right. grew up in Glendale, went to Glendale High School, and then, you know, went to the Army and then came back. But you speak and fluent Armenian. I speak huh? fluent Armenian, and Assyrian. fluent Assyrian, and Assyrian. fluent yeah. Farsi, that's and crazy, German. Too. And yeah, I speak a. I speak I mean, a few languages. I'll break out yeah. the Old Testament right now. <laughs> <laughs> I mean. So, by the way, you know the Passion of the Christ. When yeah. you watch them, we actually understand yeah. what they're saying because we speak Aramaic. Aramaic. Woman, yeah. Yeah. Woman actually, hired as a dialect yeah. coach. She it was a female. Dead dude. I I didn't have to. Uh, really? That, you understand all of it? You speak a Syrian yeah. fluent. Yeah. yeah. By the way, he speaks better than I do. No, not at his level. No, no. Because I tell people when I see that guy, come on, this guy's guy better than me. No, there's no way. And I bought a lachat hamzum and sunnah. Like guys, we don't need a race war going on right here. By the way, we're all friends here. Cursed out everybody. Exactly. Everybody just heard the first language. Yeah. But by the way, why why are you still in LA? Are you like the last of the Mohicans? Are you like well because I got are you hoping for Larry Elder for something to turn around? I am, dude. I am. I. <laughs> I, I, I want the Santas to come over to LA. I'm so done with this. But I, uh, you know what, man? I got my kids, uh, my ex, and my my children from my first marriage are there. So I can't. Yeah, I I, I can't. That's tough. Them. I can't. Got it. There's no way. But I if can. that wasn't the case, I'd be. Down, baby. Okay, so if that wasn't the case, <laughs> me and Shab would have been like, "See ya." Shab too, dude. I we yeah. I looked at property in Nashville and in Austin. I looked at it, but you know, you looked at Nashville. Yeah, and Rogan specifically and Rogan Austin. still calls me. Everybody's yeah. like, "Get to Austin." I'm like, "I, I got kids. I'm not gonna, you know, you but fly." By, them. But I, I tell you, let me tell you uh, uh, my opinion. My opinion. Yeah. I, I don't want the Austin community to get upset at me. I think both Austin and Nashville is a pit stop. Okay. To come to Florida. I, I agree. I think it's I, I'm a with you. Stop to come here. I'm with you. I'm, and let me tell I'm you why. You I'm going to explain to you why. This is purely coming from my own case study because my pit stop was Dallas. Sure. So I lived in Dallas for five years and I said, listen, this is a great place. No taxes. They love hard workers. They love capitalism. Plano, people work the most hours per week. So they're workers. Yep. They're not people that want to leave at 459 community. They're, you know, they're willing to do the job. I'm three hours. So I'm like, this is it, babe. We're going to stay here. After How about long? the fifth year, you're like, you know what I'm, you know, this yeah. we kind of like this place called Breakers, and we kind of like LA, and we kind of like what Texas offers. And if Texas and LA had a baby, it'd be Florida. You know what? Why don't we just move to Florida? So I think Nashville and Austin, I think, is a pit stop. And I think it's about three to five years till that pit stop my gets validated. My favorite, my favorite audience is, yeah. and in many ways, my favorite place in the world is Miami. Really? <laughs> yeah. Because, because all I want to be at the end of the day is Cuban. <laughs> or at least are you married now from, or no? I, I am. I okay. have a fiance, but y- yeah, nah, that, yeah no. <laughs> I'm actually. Well, I mean, listen, Callan, I'm shocked a, that you said your favorite audiences are Miami because they can't pay attention to a freaking uh, comedy bro, my show. Favorite, they want to worry about the it, club and go partying uh, and bring, talking about something. Like, dude, he loves it. Yeah. You talk dude, shit to I them. Love, what dude, do you do? I'm, this is me. This is me. He's a Spanish dancer. All salsa right now. Let me explain something to you. That that they have a secret. Look, and by the way, yeah. I mean, if you want to, I, I, Cuban, <laughs> Venezuela, Colombian, the, the women. The beauty, not, yeah, yeah, not, yeah, yeah. not that I look at other, I have a girl, guys. Yeah. I would never but even still, look. No. But, but still. Naturally, it, it changes. I mean, it's out of control. And yes. Brian has a bit where you want to be like a, a Latin dance I coach. I mean, I, I, want to, uh, I want to say, I dance. You know, like, <laughs> ask me what I do. I dance. Hey, Brian, hey, Brian what, what do you do for a living? What do you do? I dance. Ask me, where, get, ask me where I'm from. I'm going to be romantic. Hey, but, well, where are you from? Just out of curiosity. I'm from the mountains, my friend. And <laughs> I'm sorry, wait, Spain? 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 Lots of different places, but Spain, it's my heart. Oh. I so dance with my heart, oh my not my feet. So you're getting paid to. to I just want to be that guy. I just want to <laughs> say romantic shit all the time. So you got you to play, play a movie where you can do that one of these I days. wish. Well, yeah. but, 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 so, so LA, <clears throat> you're probably going to be there for a few years. You don't see yourself leaving anytime soon. I, you know, look, I live, I live close to the beach. I live in a really cool part of LA. Where are you at? Uh, Manhattan Beach. Okay, yeah. You know? I mean, that's Vince that's, where we, that's where our friend Center's at. Center's right? there, yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's so, not really California, though. Correct. By yeah. the way, we just yeah. came back from LA. We were there, well, I mean, at least when we Two went together. Ago, yeah. The first time we were there in 2020, COVID lockdown, it was a shit show. <sighs> and we just went back and we were like, and Mario was like, let's go to Venice and see what's going on. 
How shocked were you? How nice it was? Oh, it was great. I, I, I like we were first expecting to tell you. homeless people. No, Venice well, they was good. It they cleaned it up. Yeah. They cleaned it up. Yeah. When, when was this? When did this happen? During, during, Two days ago. During COVID, it was the worst. But now, yeah, I own a house in Venice. Yeah, and uh, it's I'm holding on to it because it's what tur- what turned around in L.A. because it's better than it was because during COVID the lockdown. sheriff's department okay went down and they were doing a live news conference and the woman almost got knifed by somebody. You would see naked people. These people are. The, the homeless situation, the narrative from the, the left is that it's a housing problem and it's an inequality problem. They are liars. They're right. liars. Um, it's, it's an ideology they hold on to and they're not interested in solving the problem. Sorry. Go to, go to Sacramento and tell them uh, that it's a, um, it's, a, it's a mental health and drug addiction problem. And is that it, what it, it is? And it is. And when COVID hit, those services kind of evaporated for a lot of people. And that's why you had so many people on the street. Um, so the idea that it's a housing problem and it's inequality is is not only a lie, it's a malicious lie because it doesn't do anything for those people who really do need help. They need help. A lot of these people are schizophrenic. Mm-hmm. They have serious mental health problems that are beyond their control. And I think it was Adam uh, Carolla who said, if, if there were a bunch of stray dogs on the street in Los Angeles, believe me, we'd do something about 1, it. 1,000%. But these are people, so whatever. Uh, you know, and, and, and I'm sorry, but if you look at the bluest states, they have the worst homeless. They have the worst, they have the most yep. regressive tax policies. They have the worst homeless uh, inequality problems because they're not really willing to take it on. To go to San Francisco and tell me how that's working out with, with, with their DA and, and the, all those, all those essentially those Marxists in, in power. Go Can they turn it around because it's, uh, are you California see, are you is not turning the mayor red of, anytime. Uh, who's so. running for mayor of LA? Caruso, are you following that story uh, yes, or no? He, yes, and I... And, and he I, seems pretty cool. Well, I, he's, 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 made, he's made the world work. So could this tough on crime billionaire be LA's next I mayor Rick so. Caruso's crime. I think so. It's tapping so. into fears of uh, crime, Los Angeles frustration. Can you make that a little bit bigger? Homelessness, billionaire real estate developer has uh, spent uh, more than $23 million on his campaign to become LA's next tough on crime mayor and experts say his record-breaking investment is buying him a real chance at victory. Wow, so. interesting. Yeah. He's because people, after a while, every society, after a while, looks around and says, this isn't working, man. This is not working. It, it, it's it just doesn't yeah we're the, and, cause, and especially when you're paying that much tax and what are you spending it on yeah you know what I mean like you help these people it, and think, a lot of more vets yeah. a lot of those guys what are do vets. you think is going to take for for you for California to have a Republican governor well we had a Republican governor the the the, the issue isn't Republican governor I think the most of this politics is all local right so the larger question isn't focusing on the gubernatorial race and things like that. It's more about local politics. We have a Democratic supermajority. I don't think a Democratic supermajority, I don't think a supermajority of Republicans or anything is good. You need, you need pushback. You, you want there to be yeah. this, this argument, these checks, these balances. You want pushback on both sides. That's how government churns slowly and stays out of our business. There's an important distinction when you talk about big government versus small government. Mm. Big government is... Not you. You have to be careful about how you define these things. Big government, go ahead. It's really a question of when that government gets in, involved in your individual liberties, in your ability to make money, use your own risk, your own ingenuity to make you know a profit. Those kinds of things. When 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 a government bureaucrat comes along, and regardless of the science says you still have to be in a mask, and my children still have to be in a mask, I have a problem with that. You're actually interfering in my child's well-being. Because you have an ideology, you know, whatever that might be. I'm using that as, the, as, a, as a hard example. I know that's a controversial issue. But I think we have to be very careful about how we draw that distinction. In L.A., what they need to worry about is I think it's five women on the L.A. City Council who control a budget that's larger than, I think, all 40 other states. Right. Or, in fact, it might be 40 states combined. They, have a, they control a huge budget. And it's five of these women that... I'm sorry, our, you know, I don't want the view. I want to, I want a mix, bro. I want a mix of people. It's not about, I'm not bashing women. It's about, you know, I just want a mix of people. I'd like, hey, you know who I want controlling the budget? People that have, to, have made a business work. You, the, the other problem is that. They don't want to run, though. Those guys, they don't like the run. fact that Caruso's running, a lot of times, you know, I said this the other day. I said, you, you know, why is it that people who would make great statesmen that make great senators, congressmen, governors, president have no desire to run. 
and those who shouldn't are so motivated to run. I know because because it's two different personality types. I think that uh, there's the person that's the you know hall monitor, and then there's the person doing it. Look, it, so the hall monitor guys running. Well, think states. about it for a second. We need economists. Fantastic. We need think tank yeah. people. We need, but but when you're an economist, you're not paying a price for being wrong. When you're an entrepreneur, you pay a price for being wrong. You adjusted the price of pain. This is what, you know, I think it was uh, the book, uh, the hell is it called? Uh, not Black Swan, but the other book, um, uh, Skin in the Game. Uh, well, 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 kind of. Great book. Great book. Yeah. Because, and it's so true. I, I think you're going to learn more about how the economy actually works from an entrepreneur. I'm not saying economists like Paul Krugman, et cetera, don't have their place, but they can say whatever they want and they can push uh, um, sort of an idea. I, I, their hands aren't that dirty. I'd like to see some calluses on your hands. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So, so if so if our politicians, let's just say Newsom is a hall pass guy, what's Trump? <laughs> if, if Newsom's uh, asking for the hall pass, hall who would Trump be? Uh, Trump is the wrecking ball. <laughs> <laughs> Trump's just the giant orange guy who comes in and goes, chess and he just throws it in. <laughs> it's like let's rock and roll you know trump is my my buddy it caddied for clinton trump obama and bush caddy and caddy he's, he was you learn a lot caddying like that oh, a lot. so you this is a lot of a insider lot. Yeah. five where, hours where, where, where was this was this Cam, in Cameron, florida my buddy cameron booth yeah in florida yeah Cad, caddied for jordan he was on the tour great guy and a hell of a golfer and uh he, he's he's not He's he's not a political guy, but he said he said the best golfer is Trump, and the one guy you'd want to have a beer with at the end of the day is Trump. Like, wow. like you say what you will about him, I I think the problem with Trump is that he's just such a narcissist. He just he's such a Trumpist, not even he just loves himself so much, and he grates on people. He's probably a bit of a con man. I'm sorry, but you got to admit the man's funny. The man cracks me up. And he's and he does have some good ideas when it comes to the economy. One hundred percent. I mean, so 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 I think where we fall off the mark is when we go. He's a you know in L.A. you can't even have this conversation. Never. If you if I even say Trump's yeah I don't like Trump, but if I if I even have a small caveat that there are some things the, you get attacked. Performing yeah. in L.A. you can't say things like I that. do. I do. I, okay. I have. What I have. And do you was, really feel it though? I yeah. oh, trust me, you feel it. Yeah. I, I I did something where I was like, I felt bad for because I know I go where are my Trump supporters at. That was a I opened with that, so the energy was already went to shit. Yeah. I was like, come on, there's and then it, it was almost like like they were scared, like two or three. I go, I go, don't be scared of these assholes. I go, where are you? It was such an awkward. And then I got off stage, and the man, the GM, and somebody was like, hey. You shouldn't. I don't think you should. You should take that out of your. I go what? A joke that I want to do. You, you could say the N word and get away with it faster than you could say a Trump. Pump. But I'm not joking. It's in like California, a, oh, in LA, it's hundred percent. But th th we go deeper on that. Obviously, they don't like Trump. Okay, but why is it? Is you just can't bring it up? I think it's Trump, part of the insulated Trump, culture. There. What's the deal? I think Trump is a really very ice, a very polarizing figure. I think the way he speaks and and uh, I, I I I think he was. He's definitely not very presidential, right? Mm -hmm. I think that what the Democrats and the left made a mistake about is that they didn't realize that most Americans are not voting for Trump because they're racist, misogynist, and all that other stuff. They're voting for a guy because after eight years with a Democratic president, et cetera, they, had, they still only had $500 in the bank. And... That's what matters to most Americans. I want to be able to send my kid to baseball after school. I want my daughter to be able to take ballet lessons. I don't want to have to w make a decision between milk and ballet. And if you don't understand that that's the case with most Americans, then you aren't around most Americans. And for me, you know, what I notice, again, is that, and I'm not saying the left doesn't have ideas. I'm not saying that, they, they, that a lot of people on the left or people who tend to be Demo Democrats don't have, aren't good people, don't have good ideas, aren't part of the mix, aren't necessary for certain things in society. We need each other. I notice that the people that are, that are making a lot of the decisions the people that come from a very expensive fam a very privileged background, a family that's well connected with a lot of money, step into a very expensive school with very expensive walls that you can't get into, and then they go directly into a newsroom, back into academia, mm -hmm. or right into politics, or mm. into Hollywood. What does that mean? 
They haven't come into contact with objective reality enough. They just haven't. And I promise you, I promise you that most of them have never had a plumber, a landscaper, someone in the military, or anybody that works with their hands at their dinner table. They are not, it's not because they don't want those people there. They just don't come into contact with them. The Mm. people of color they talk about, the people that actually need help, I promise you they don't know. And again, I'm not saying it's their fault. I'm just saying it's what happens. We get very segregated and we are, you know, you, you fall into a class substructure and you stay there, man. You do. And they have compassion. They probably have guilt. They want to make a difference in the world and they start studying inequality and they start seeing these things and you have an echo chamber in these academic institutions and nobody is pushing back. There are no conservative thinkers. There just aren't. There are no, uh, there, there are no real capitalists because that's not who gets into academia. Look, look, at, look at the difference between what happened with John Stewart and Bill Maher. You go back five years ago. Who's who's God between the two? That's a great. It's that's a John great, Stewart. That's a great. Comparison. Look with John. So so John still wants to be invited to the same parties with Obama. Still wants to be invited to the same parties with you know Hollywood, whatever it is. And Bill Maher's like, no, no, this is who I am. And listen, if you're like me, because as I talk shit to everybody on both sides, and this is what my comedy is. And look how much Bill Maher has changed. Well, he's like just speaking sense. Audience, we all agree. It, it's true, but but what you're talking about is very hard to do for a lot of people. You know, it's very hard to do because it's like, oh my gosh, but what what if this happens and what if that happens? No, sometimes you got to sit there and say, you know, I, I don't know if I agree. Like, uh, okay, so Kellyanne Conway is on The View. I don't know if you saw that or not. No. She's on The View and they started booing her and then Whoopi's trying to play the role of, hey, you know, we're, we're equal, all this stuff. Hey, I don't care if you agree. Let her finish her thought. And then she says, you know, uh, 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 something about Trump. He says, I told to Trump, and Trump responds to this. It's hilarious. He says, <laughs> while the first uh, uh, team, Trump debunked, okay, former President Donald Trump on Thursday morning personally lashed out at Kellyanne Conway over her new memoir. Here's a deal in which she recalled telling the ex-president that he definitely lost the 2020 election. While the first term, uh, President Trump uh, rebuking on Conway in her book this week, Via spokesperson, the latest lashing was posted on Trump himself in the Truth social platform. He says, Kellyanne Conway never told me that she thought we lost the election. If she had, I wouldn't have dealt with her any longer. She would have been wrong. Could go back to her crazy husband. Okay, like, <laughs> yeah, the, the problem with Trump is the minute you, the minute you push back, the minute you push he's back, he's shit. like, I don't like you. Yeah, yeah. And he's his, his, his loyalty lasts as long as you you you, you consider him God. She yeah. is so. Listen, so so <laughs> this to me, was his most let me trusted tell you, advisor. Yeah. Dude, Even me, she will look, go under that bus course. as he drives. Let over me put it to you this way. Let me put it to you this way. That's my problem with Trump. To me, Kellyanne Conway is Tucker from Milwaukee Bucks when they traded him to Miami. Okay, you know what I'm saying. You need certain you players. You need a dirty set sob that, oh, to be on your team. She was fearless. Yeah, she was. If she, by the way, if if he loses her, if he loses her, I'm telling you right now, it's gonna hurt his chances. If he loses so. Kellyanne Conway, I, you that, can't lose that's, Kellyanne that's Conway. That's a good point. That's, you cannot his, lose Kellyanne Conway. It's like yeah. it, it, she's it's, got guts. Yeah, you there's you you cannot lose. Kellyanne Conway, but at the same time, man, you look at Trump to respond to we. Do you like Trump? Are you worried that he's going to split the ticket? If I have to choose between him. DeSantis and Trump. Oh, no. DeSantis is not running against Trump. I know that because I know that. Okay. DeSantis is not running. DeSantis was in our community last Tuesday. They did a fundraiser last Tuesday in Bay Colony. DeSantis is not running against uh, Trump. Now, okay, I could be wrong. Last minute things can change because a part of me, we talk about it where we say, you know, uh, I think sometimes you think momentum is going to be on your side all the time. And I don't know if he's ever going to peak like the way DeSantis is peaking today. Right. Because y- you mm-hmm. peak when there's crisis, and he's peaking. Yep. So it's not Four a years bad from now, time he might to be run. Irrelevant. That's yeah. the story. That's the challenge. And if he so, runs against Trump, it's a tough one. It's a it? tough he, one because Trump's going to play dirty, and you have to go dirty as well yourself. I know. And that's just going to happen. So it's not going to be a Trump-DeSantis ticket. You see a lot of guys here putting Trump-DeSantis ticket. I, I think that is as unlikely as... A Kobe and Jordan being on the same team. It yep. just doesn't make any yep. team. It's like putting two big personalities on the same team, try to run together. It's going to be tough. Yeah. You need somebody to be Pippen. You need somebody to be the second you know, person. Yeah. Neither one of them are guys like that. So yeah. if it's against Biden, if it's Biden being on the ticket, because right now what the left is struggling with is who they're going to replace Biden with. 
What's their story going to be? How are they going to present it to the audience? The only way you can do it the right way is you have to come up with a health story in the next 12 months. Is probably what's going to happen. The next 12 months, Biden's going to come out and going to say, I went and had a test with the doctor, and the doctor's telling me I have a cyst or have something. And unfortunately, we're trying to do our best. And if you hear stories like that, that is the uh, narrative, yes. which is kind of like the narrative of soft landing and saying, oh, my gosh, you know, you know, he was president while he was dealing with cancer. What a what a mm-hmm. honorable man. So then we're the uh, um, America's going to get emotional and sentimental. Look, he was doing his best while he was dealing with cancer. Some story like that. Maybe yeah. it's cancer, replace cancer or whatever else you want to uh, replace it with. But they have to find a candidate. It ain't Kamala. No, nobody no, likes Kamala. Nobody likes Kamala. Not the left, not the right, right, not the middle. Nobody likes Kamala. And and let me just say this too before I want to hear you finish yeah. this because I was saying that a lot of people on the left don't come into contact with objective reality. It's the same thing with the right. There are a lot of people on the right now who like you know who don't. The people that are making decisions tend to be. They're looked at by Americans as being very wealthy and out of touch as well, right? So, but but, but keep going. I want to hear what you're saying. Yeah. So who do you have? So think about what's left after that. So then you got to go to Pete Buttigieg, which is who they want to market. Okay. Pete Buttigieg. Pete Buttigieg. Pete, yeah, it's, it's going to be very tough no, because of foreign good. policy. Oh, you'd be amazed how many people behind closed doors. I don't think America's getting ready behind for, him. I don't think America's ready for a, a first husband. I'm being serious. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I agree. With well, you. Like it's it's a, it's like. America's, we're, we're, we've come a long way, but... Let me tell you something, Brian Callen. I think we are ready for a gay president. Yeah, yeah I don't I just don't think we're ready to see him kissing his husband on yeah. TV. Oh, for America, yeah. I, again, gay president, Whatever. I'm okay with that. Yeah. But- Walking down the... The, the-, the Russians yeah. are going to be like, that's interesting. Oh, yeah. this is your guy. Very interesting. And then, Pat, going up... Well, what- some say we've already had a gay president, but that's a different yeah, story. Yeah, that's a whole so different... You, you were saying. <laughs> so, like, and, and here's the thing, Brian. Like, Come people- on, Patrick. The rumors. People like us that are like, listen, Trump, with the policy-wise, you can't deny it, okay? And what pisses me off again, well, my Democratic cousins that are, you know, pretty liberal, pretty kind of leaning left... This two years, you guys have had a chance to show us, you know what, the hell with Trump, you know, policies aside, whatever, look how good we're doing. Look at what's happened in these two years. Now, because of your guys' side's policies, you're giving him the easiest way right back in. So I don't want to hear the shit talking when he well, does win. But I don't, he's gonna I don't, win. I'm not, I don't worry about Democrats and I don't worry about Republicans traditionally. Democrats and Republicans are f- no problem. You got both sides of the aisle. That that's it makes government move slowly. That's that's how the country was founded. I got no problem. Some people tend to lean more Democrat, more Republicans. Maybe it's a personality type. Do you see what he just put up? He no. put a smile on my face. Go back to the picture. While he's talking, you put a picture like then you expect me to keep a straight face. This guy's so funny. <laughs> Look what he does. He, he, he. How am so, I supposed I, to keep a straight face? No way. That is hilarious. Is that a real picture? No, I think that's cropped. No, <laughs> that is not a real right. picture. That's cropped, cropped, but it's funny. Is it a real picture? No, or no? it's not. I was going to say it's, that's okay. It's not. It's not that he's gay. It's that he takes three months off from maternity. Maternity, and he's the, and, and, and we had a uh, supply chain crisis. By the way, Matt he, Zeller believes it needs to be two years. No way. Matt you Zeller, serious? Matt who Zeller, does? whom we'd love to have you back on. Former CIA government employee. That uh, the leave needs to be two years, but who's going to pay for it? Exactly, you're going to pay for it. I'm going to pay for it. So so go back to the. You don't have problem with the Democrat. You don't have problem with Republicans. They're going to fight. They'll have the gridlock. My my issue is this far left woke agenda that has taken hold. They are when you start talking about when the New York Times runs 81 articles, I think, on gender neutral bathrooms (laughs) when the world's on fire. And this was back when I think it was a couple years ago. It's like you're so out of touch with how Americans think. You're so out of touch when trans rights are trumping everything else. Dude, you're talking about a very tiny, tiny minority of people that when, when, when you want to take children and put them on puberty blockers because you're an expert in, in gender dysphoria. I don't No, you're not. No, you're not. And I don't agree. Let a child's brain develop. They they go through phases. You know these are common sense things. And when the left hijacks, when they start doing that, the far left starts doing that, and they drown out the reasonable voices. What happens is it it creates a whole bunch of people on this side who go, "You want to go to war, dude? You want to go to war? We can do this." I, that's what I worry about. I worry that I really worry when I hear people over there talking about tearing down institutions and uh, characterizing the United States as only a patriarchy, a tyranny, a racist country, all those things, okay? We're a lot more than that. 
We are a lot more, just like a human being is. Sinners, saints, and everything in between. Bipolar apes, and so is a country. We're a work in pro progress. We're a work in progress. This was called the grand experiment for a reason. It's still going on. The Constitution is a verb. The United States is a verb. It's an idea that continues to evolve, okay? But I think the Founding Fathers solved the political problem, okay? A little, a little credit where it's due. The words you use like feminism, individualism, universalism, humanism, all those words were invented by the people you're criticizing and by a system you're criticizing. The First Amendment, which you enjoy very much, and saying what you want and screaming, was fought for. It was fought for with blood, and it had to be fought for as an idea, and it had to be won as an idea. All those things that we benefit from every day. You may be a socialist, I respect you, but you're also tweeting from your iPhone. So a little respect for the marketplace as well if you could, right? Let's be, let's be aware of where we came from. Let's be aware of the kind of foundation that was laid for us before we got here that we benefit from every single day. Because whether you know it or not, your anchor is in that bedrock. And thank God for it. Because the Founding Fathers, as far as I'm concerned, solved the political problem. You know who didn't? The Greeks and everybody else. So... There, James Madison, Alexander Hamilton, you're talking about John Jay, you're talking about genius. The Federalist Papers is one of the, or the greatest idea in philosophy. I'm sorry it is. And why do I say that? Because we still live in the greatest country in the world. Because everybody has a chance. We still have potential. We're, I need music when I'm talking. This <laughs> God, God, God damn. Oh, well well said, bro. I need you, air. You, you will. I want well air said. blowing my hair back. Uh, I mean, you, you, know, have, you should have been was... standing up with your hand on your heart. Listen, when you run it is a real Dude, question. Dude, I was going mean, to say, gonna, gonna, are you announcing crying, today? Like, skeletons in my you went through, Calvin. Dude, I start, get, I start going into a monologue. It's like I become an actor. I get tired of my own voice. I was waiting for somebody to stop. I the American flag behind you waving. I love it. By the way, the speech, whatever that whatever that that diatribe was amazing. Am I wrong? Not at all. Well, so my crying. question is, what's your biggest issue with society today? Because it seems like you've got a bone to pick. Polar, polarization. I, I'm, I'm afraid, I worry that, that nobody can even agree on where the truth is coming from. We never had that problem. That's new for me. Mm -hmm. And what I mean by that is back in the day, I could go, I heard it on the news, bro. And we go, mm. well, the news is vetted. I trust the New York Times. It's like, Times. oh, what did you hear it on the, CNN or the, Fox? My dad, my dad I, always said the New York Times was always lean left, but you still trusted it as a source of information. There's no question. The New York Times was a trusted source of information. So was the Wall Street Journal, even though it had a much bigger reach. For the audience that doesn't know, what did your dad do for a living? My dad was, uh, I, I grew up all over the world. <laughs> You know what I mean? I grew up all over the world. Wasn't it like a CIA? Hey, whoa, hey, 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 hey. we talking Patch, about here? You keep you keep waking up free every morning. <laughs> yeah. You do what he does. Ray Liotta just passed Listen. away. That's a little respect. No, my my dad was a banker. Yeah, worked at Citibank, and we lived in. I was born in the Philippines. I, I lived in uh, Calcutta, and then. Bombay and then yeah. Lebanon, then Pakistan, then Lebanon, Lebanon again, then Sounds Greece, like and yeah, Saudi it's Arabia. A banker. Definitely a banker. Definitely a banker. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. For was sure, a, your dad was a banker. My dad banker. was a banker. Yeah. I've what seen is, this movie before. <laughs> I've seen you, this movie. What do, what do you guys Honey, what do you do for them? Why do you leave three months at a time? Baby, this is a big deal. <laughs> big private equity deal it's, we're working with. We all with. saw private True Lies deal. with Arnold Schwarzenegger, buddy. A man, a man can't, can't do work so, business so, in Beirut during a war? So your dad said, <laughs> even though New York Times has left, it's vetted, so you can trust. Yeah, it. yeah. And, I, and I and I think to the, and I think now when I when I say something like, no, I heard it on Tucker Carlson or I heard it on CNN, I lose half the room because they go, they're liars, and I think that's a problem, right? The the, the biggest maybe challenge that we face is that when you can no longer agree on one source of truth, mm -hmm. you are going to have people that not only align themselves with their own echo chamber and align themselves with the kind of truth that, that fits their narrative, right? That confirmation bias. But you have an entire mechanism of information that allows you to get pushed even further mm -hmm. in that direction or even further in this mm -hmm. direction, right? And now you've got two, you, you have almost this this cyber civil war that could happen. You get these parallel economies, and the people have talked about this way more eloquently than I have. But it kind of harkens back to the phenomenon that allowed Europe to have a 40-year civil war. World War I and World War II was maybe, you could make the argument, an offshoot of the fact that truth itself became atomized. I mean, let me give you an example. It used to be there was no question about 
what time was. And along comes Einstein and says, time is relative. What? Oh, by the way, time might bend and, uh, and, and light bends. And, oh, I can predict the movement of the planets. You don't need the Bible for that, bro. Let me explain something to you. <laughs> and, and Haley came along and said, yeah, Haley's coming. All of a sudden we go, whoa, 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 wait a minute. That's kind of nutty. And then you have a guy named um, Freud who comes along and says, hey, there's, you're unconscious and there's conscious. There's also something called the subconscious. And, oh, by the way, you want to have sex with your mother. There you go. <laughs> there you go, Europe. T- deal with that. You want to have sex with your mother. Oh, and, and by the way, you're ruthless about your sexual selection. And then another guy comes along named Darwin and says, hey, um, there's something called evolution. There's design without a designer. God doesn't exist. Don't need him. Uh, it, there's also something called so- sexual selection, and it's ruthless. Maybe women actually like the guy with the strongest jaw, the broadest shoulders, and the most aggression. And all of a sudden we go, hold on, but the meek shall inherit the earth. That's cool, dude. Yeah, you go adopt the three-legged dog. I'm getting the, I'm getting the four-legged dog with a strong bite, and I want, I want good guns. Yeah. And, that, and, and, and that's why when Nietzsche said God is dead, what he meant was God may be dead, but human beings are religious anyway, and we're going to come up with our own religions. And our religions are going to be communism, fascism, capitalism. We're going to come up with our own religions. And the problem with that is that now you got ideologies. And when you have ideologies, you have camps. And then you have charismatic people that have control of the guns that take over, like Stalin, like Hitler, right? Who say, um, this is the new truth. And oh, by the way, I'm going to reshape society as the utopia I envision. We can make human beings perfect. We can make society perfect. So you might be flawed now, but kiss my ass. I'm going to make all you perfect. And the other ones who, who are lost, there are some people, by the way, who we can't educate. You guys, you guys are a little older. You got to go. <laughs> you got to go. You got, I can't. Hey, it's just business. Yeah, I got to purify. I got to break a couple eggs to make an omelet. This is what happened. And so th- if you think that can't happen today, I would only say that I promise you Stalin's Russia and Hitler's Germany said the exact same thing before they came to power. You know, it's like it could never happen here. Yeah, they said the same thing. I mean, that's a pretty bleak thing. Again, I need music. I was, yeah. So you're very. I need music. So you, are, you're very <laughs> optimistic about the future. I, I actually am. Yeah, I think you are. I am. In your own dark way, you're optimistic that good things are around the corner. Well, because human beings figure the way through, yeah. man. Yeah. I'm just talking a lot, but people <laughs> no, but are I like, there. People are aware of the things I'm saying. You like you're not are you are you more depressed now that I brought that up? No, not you're like no, right. no not at well, all. Pat but, says all the time, but, the future looks bright. Uh, yeah, future I looks bright. So, so there's no one that's going to be tell more me why. Tell me why you're. Pat. Give me get me out of my. Uh, why I think the future looks bright? Yeah. Oh, uh, one million percent future looks bright because exactly what you went back to. Uh, you, you know, you know how you said the hall pass guys and and the guys that. Uh, uh, the bully who bullied until he finally realized that you uh, got the one kid you bully to spend uh, 10,000 hours learning how to fight, and then he came back and yeah. he not only whooped your ass, but you knew you could no longer cross. So what, what bullies don't realize they do is they, they create a Michael Jordan. They create a Dave Chappelle. They create a Joe Rogan. They create a... Uh, uh, Patrick uh, Bet David. Uh, they create. They create <laughs> any of those. Oh, of course, no question. I mean, I, b- bullying comes in different forms. Bullying is not just about being a kid. Bullying right. is, you know, f- uh, somebody with money that you know their money came from family, and maybe they're imposing themselves on you a little bit. And you're sitting there saying, "Dude, I would whoop your ass, and I'm going <laughs> to outwork your ass." You're okay, no problem. Let's see what's going to happen here, and then yeah. you go out there and prove your point. Exactly. But I think I think the, the the right people are waking up today. Kiyosaki and I had a Zoom. We're having a conversation. We're working on something together. And, uh, you know, he says, hey, I think we need to have this guy on the podcast together, me and you. This guy was in, I was in the Marines with them back in the days. And, you know, I screwed up. I got kicked out. But he didn't. He stayed in. He became a lieutenant general. And uh, later on became a congressman. And we both think that we need to raise men more today, et cetera, et cetera. I said, he says, so how do you feel about the, today with everything that's going on? Because, you know, market crash is coming. And it's going to be very ugly. Uglier than what people think it's going to be. Is that true, dude? Oh, dude, uglier than what people think is it's going to be. Is that right? Next to- wow. If you got, if you... If you have the ability, you can buy a lot of stocks so cheap right now. Did you see Plan, uh, pa, what Palantir CEO was talking about? Did you see what happened to the Palantir uh, stock? No. Have you seen that or no? Tyler, did you see what happened to the Palantir stock? So first of all, 
That's a good stock to own. It's going to go lower. Okay, Snapchat, did you see what it dropped to? No. In September, it was an $83 stock. Snapchat? It's a $13 stock. Damn. What? 80% drop, Damn. okay? So you got every one of these stocks you look at, where they're at right now, all of them. But it's going to get worse the next 12 to 18 months, maybe 24 months to market. House prices are going to drop 20 to 40%. When? Uh, in the next 12 to 24 months. Okay. House prices are going to drop the next 20, 20, uh, 12 to 24 months. So what do we do? It's going to happen. The what people. Do, what the, do I do? It's, it's the people. The people that are prepared are going to go and add. Uh, they're going to take their net worth and do five to fifty times in the next two to five years. Five to fifty times. You're going to see guys, and I'm telling you right now, you're going to see million dollar guys be hundred million dollar guys in the next two to five years. You're going to see ten million dollar guys be billionaires in the next two to five years. The ones who are ready. Yeah. But you're also going to see the highly re- leveraged. $200 million guy become a $17 million guy. Damn. You're going to see the highly leveraged $18 million guy become a $600,000 guy. Damn. The next, uh, again, my opinion, this is coming from me purely as an opinion. You can trash it. You can p- break it apart. Do whatever you're doing. However. I thought you were going to be bright. I thought yeah. the future, was bright. Well, future looks is, bright, buddy. This is the part. This, this, this is the part. This is the other end the of the part, rainbow the right part now. That's br- the part that's bright, unfortunately, Every once in a while, pruning is needed. Every yeah. once in a while, just like the forest has got a lot of trees, yeah. itself creates fire to, mm-hmm. to, you know, and then next thing you know, the ones at the bottom that are really the ones that are going to be the stronger, powerful trees, they're the ones that needed the sun. They're going to come up and be uh, better and beyond. Like even right now, you look at sports every time play. Like look at Luca. Luca's Larry Bird, but except five times better. You look at a lot of these guys that are coming up in every sport, in every business, in every game, podcast, comedy, in every way. Someone's going to come and do it better because what they have, it's tens of thousands of hours of people that did it before them. They're just going to make it better. Yeah. Okay? So, but no I, opportunity, right? Oh, there's no question look at, about look at it. podcasting. Yeah. Like we all, everybody's like, oh, yeah. these liberals, look what, look, it created an entire economy. The Daily yeah. Wire wouldn't exist at all. And, you know, podcasting, like you, people blaze. are making a fortune. <laughs> Pushing back with either a reasonableness oh, yeah. or a right wing. When one door so, closes, another one yeah, else. Like, like, By the way, you know who wholeheartedly agrees with you? Who? Uh, maybe just the uh, founder, CEO type guy of Tesla and now Twitter, Elon Musk. You, you know what he, I don't know if he founded uh, Tesla, but what did he have to say about this? He said exactly what you're saying. Tyler, you have that article? What was your business, Patrick? Insurance. Till today. Insurance. I still are an insurance company. We have 20,000 agents nationwide. I'll, what? It's on We slide. have 150 offices. I'll put an event together in August wow. uh, in Las Vegas. Jeez. We'll have 15,000 people there. Sebastian uh, was the performer last year at my annual oh convention. My God, that's amazing. And he came up. He was freaking hilarious. It's amazing. Though. Mario Lopez was our MC. You know, we had that article yeah, right was there. It, but so, yeah, so insurance you're is, a guy I listen to because you're in insurance. I'm an insurance. You're, yeah. you're risk. Well, you're about risk. Pure all, yeah. all insurance. There's no actuary. emotion. No. no. <laughs> so 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 I'm listening to you very carefully. No, of course. That's yeah. what I'm so I don't much. care about Elon Musk. I care yeah. about a guy who's well, actually doing. No, things. but I'm saying Elon Musk kind of knows a thing or two yeah. about the economy. Well, well, Patrick, what would you say? And I, I know you guys want to get. What would you say to somebody that isn't a millionaire, doesn't have a hundred million, doesn't have twenty million? Let's say a family that has, let's say. Twenty, thirty thousand saved. What would you tell well, that well, family to do right oh, now? Dude, to, I, I love this. Great quote. So, but check this out. Like, like, what have we valued the last two years? How do you know who is legit the last five years? How? How the hell do you know? We, you know how they say we have an economic expansion of 128 months. No, we haven't. We, we, we've had an economic expansion of nearly 150 months, 140 months. Take COVID out. If you took COVID out and they kept rates at zero or half a point. Federal Reserve, this economic expansion would have continued past February of 2020, right? So what happens when the economy is growing? How do you know who's a real millionaire? Mm. Like, how do you know who's real? are leveraged. Yeah, how do you know? You don't know. How do you know who's the real comedian? How do you know who's the real? There's a filtering process that we all got to go through, right. right? That's right. Okay. So the only way you know the filtering process is during bad seasons. That is the only way mm. you're going to know who's real and who's not. The foundations so, are stronger. So, so the last two years, everybody's like, dude, forget about it. Just go get your own job. Go to the other company. These guys don't want to pay you. That guy's going to pay 30 grand. Ask him for a raise. If they don't leave him, tell them to work from home. Tell them to work from home. Tell them to work Give them a threat. They'll, they'll have to give it to you. They'll have to keep you. Give all that stuff. And you know what's happened the last two years? Employers who've been bullied are sitting there and saying, damn, never in my life have I valued loyalty 
and actually keeping your word mm-hmm. when you say you're going to do That's something number one. more than before. Wow. So companies yeah. are going to take care of those guys because the last two years, all the people that abuse companies are getting filtered out. Wow. And it's going to be so freaking awesome. ugly. <laughs> so yeah. ugly. Here's another one. If you leverage too much money and you know you shouldn't have and you were banking on the market continuously going up, there's this thing called risk. You may have a good hit and good for you. You may make five, 10, 15, 20 million dollars. <coughs> but if you overly leverage with the whole thing we're talking margin call, if you overly went aggressive, there's a lot of billionaires today who were one quarter away from being poor and broke. There's a lot of billionaires today. Yeah. There's a lot of billionaires who <clears throat> the market went their side. They sold at the right time. They bought at the right time. They lever- all leverage at the right time. Do you right- play stocks? I, I, I've been since 21 years old. I was okay. a stockbroker. I was at Bally's. I was a stockbroker. But, you know, so, so today, next two years, you're asking that person, if you're the person that's not the person with money, dude, uh, wherever you are, build the reputation of somebody that's going to come through, show value, show loyalty, show expertise, increase your skill set. The market is going to see through the bullshit the next two years. I swear to God. I believe the you. next two years, everyone's going to know, dude, this guy's not worth 50. We got to pay this guy 80. You know what? This advisor is not worth the commission we're paying. He deserves more money than what he's doing with my money because he was honest with me. It, come, and it I doesn't like come that. down to what we were talking about, like coming into contact with objective reality. Yes. Right? Like, like, that's, like you either, it's what I love about fighting comedy. It's really true. Comedy and fighting, you can't fake them. You either make people laugh or you don't. When you're in a ring and I'm watching the guy, it doesn't matter who your publicist yeah. is, who your agent is, or what they say about you. You either got the goods <laughs> or you're getting knocked out. And I, I life... Business. It's a scary. Is sight. that way right? Oh, it's a scary. It's a scary. But it's again, it's a scary site. But it's a great filtering site. Yeah. And and if you're you're good with it, you're fine. Mm. If you're prepared, you're fine. If you're not, you're not. But this 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 next two years, two three years, this two to five year run that I'm talking about, uh, uh, for for you and I, we may never have another two to five year like this. I don't think its conditions are going to be as great as it is right now to create wealth the mm-hmm. next two to five years. And by the way, I, I'm not selling by real estate. I'm not mm-hmm. selling by insurance. I'm not selling anything. All I'm saying is the next two to five years, there's going to be a lot of things for sale, and everyone's all of a sudden going to come up. The filtering system, you're going to say, dude, I had no clue that guy was real. I had no idea that guy was real. Mm. You know the whole thing when you said, you know, like uh, – uh, if I had a book to write, a self-help book, it'd yeah. be one page, and the page would be what? It takes forever. It takes forever? <laughs> yeah. Well, guess what? You know, this. we're looking around, and we're wondering, oh, that guy's probably a legit guy, or that guy's probably a legit guy. It's going to take about 20 years. It's going to take about 20 years for us to realize who the real legit people are in every field. In every field. In every field. And the next two to five years, we're going to learn who actually and more, manage your money create, well and who didn't it'll create opportunity too fortunes are made in recessions right Always all the does. time that's right. what I'm saying yeah, please text time. text me and Brian and just, like buy this all the time <laughs> I, li- I love that I, re- I appreciate that that's that's very interesting this is the quote from Musk let me know if you agree yeah, he says it's it. actually a good thing that this recession that you're talking about is going to happen it says it's a good thing he says it's been raining money on fools for too long and some bankruptcies need to happen that's I essentially do, what you're saying I so agree with him mm-hmm I so agree with them. The whole too big to fail. You know how sometimes the left says, well, how about the too big to fail? I agree. Yeah. yeah. Couple but this time we start. can't fucking bail no. them out. Let them Let go. Let them fail. Let them go yeah. a little bit. Let That's the right. pruning process come. Let some of these guys that are not good operators get yeah. fired. Do you remember what Shamat said about the airport? Remember when, 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 two, when the COVID just hit? They started bailing out all the airlines. They'll tell those guys, yeah. Jamath Palapati, yeah. and he goes, let them fucking fail. Yeah. yeah. And everyone's like, what do you mean, let them fail? Yeah. What do you mean? Well, He's that's, like, yeah, that's no. the mar- let them fail. That's the marketplace. Because everyone did their stock buybacks yeah. right before, uh, after the um, Trump uh, tax cut. And all these guys who were, had an influx of cash, all these major corporations, airlines, what have you, what'd they all do? They bought back stock, right? Did, did you see the crypto And then they thing? were just not uh, solid. One? Did you see the Bitcoin thing falling and all this? Oh, it's, it's at 29. By the way, go back to this one. A Bitcoin margin call. If the world's leading cryptocurrency drops below $21,000, Michael Saylor's micro strategy will be forced to pay up. Go what is, up. What does that mean? Okay, so uh, he, he bought 170,000 Bitcoins, I believe. 125,000 or 170,000 Bitcoins. <sighs> 
So uh, Michael Zander, sailor and MIT grad and uh, co-founder and CEO of the business intelligence for Microsoft has become faithfully as ever since company began stockpiling the cryptocurrency in August of 2020. The CEO has gone for uh, as uh, to call Bitcoin freedom as the most universally desirable property in space and time. And in 2022, Miami, the largest Bitcoin event worldwide, Sailor was met by thousands of cheering fans as he instructed the crowd to never sell their crypto. And look at the dollar amount right there, oh, $3.97 billion. He bought 129,000 Bitcoins. Do you oh, see that? I, Can you highlight that? Oh, 129. By the way, he's not wrong about Bitcoin. Mm. So it's not like he's wrong about the, the technology. The te no, he's not wrong about that. This guy's a... This guy's made and lost a few times in his career. I think back in the 90s, he was worth $9 billion. Mm -hmm. And he but went he, back to a billion and back up to $7 billion and back down. So yeah, he's, he's, he, you, you he know who Michael Burry is? You know who Michael Burry is? 30000 a coin. You ever, watched, is you ever watched the movie Big Short? The Big Short. Where, yeah, I, read, I read the book. Good book. Okay, yeah. so you know the guy. Christian that, Bale. Christian Bale. That's, yeah. that's a real-life Michael Burry. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Michael Burry and this guy have very similar ways of he was the guy who saw the, saw the, yes yeah he was the mathematician yes. but michael burry right now have you seen what michael burry said last week <clears throat> did you see what michael burry said last not. week? you got to pull up what michael burry said last week michael Ooh. burry is calling it it's it's uh uh, uh okay yeah that one right there two days ago can you click on it make it look big short investor michael burry compares the stock market slump to a plane crash and hence troubling stocks and home sales remind him of the housing bubble bursting. Great. I'm listening to that guy. Well, yeah. let me no tell you shit, something, right? Yeah. You know how long he's been saying this? Every freaking year since 2008. <laughs> he's and <laughs> same as Kiyosaki no, no, called no. for I, the same I, thing. I don't know if he's been saying it so, every year since 2008. No, no. Some of these guys, no, this no. is how this they make is, their name. Very they talk shit no, like this. this is, dude, don't, don't do that. Because this is not that guy. Michael Burry's not that guy. Michael Burry, remember the one time uh, Joe got upset at Stephen A. Smith because he was giving feedback to UFC and he's like, dude, yes. what are you doing? Don't do that again. Mm -hmm. And he says, I will never do that again because the guy's not from this world. This is not basketball. This is not football. Right. Joe knows the world. Joe gives criticism. Joe has the right. You better listen to when Joe says it, right? Because this is his world. Yeah. Michael Burry is not a guy. But try inviting Michael Burry. Pay him 200 grand to speak at your event. See what he'll It'll say. It'll be a disaster. No, no, no. He won't take your money. Right. Because he's not that guy. Yeah. Invite him to a podcast. He'll say no. He doesn't give a shit about the eyeballs. Right. This isn't that wiring of a guy. This is the he's genius. Got that, he's got that Tourette's thing or that, uh, that, that Asperger's. Asperger's. Yeah, Asperger's. He, he's Asperger's. one of those guys. So yeah. when he says that, he has not been saying this since then. This is a guy that said this in 07, 06, mm -hmm. came right, and then everything leveled off, and now he's saying it back again. But he's been saying it, Adam, for the last two years. That's that what I'm saying. Season. But not since 08. There's a big difference. Dude, this is oh, he crazy. said it in 08. For the last two years, right. he's been saying yeah, that. There's, there's it, it, a gap of 10 years that he didn't say it. Is this, I'm not going back 10 yeah, years. Is this a I'm function of so much money years in, the, in the, uh, the quantitative easing? Of easing. Fake success. Yeah. Just think about it this way, okay? Uh, 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 somebody does steroids, and you go out there and do a, a bunch of stuff, and you see a guy like, shit, what happened to this guy? This guy's 160. He's at 205. I've never seen you look like this. And you got friends that are gradually getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger, but it takes like a year, two years, three years, five years. Okay, cool. But the guy that suddenly who's not working out and comes in and adds everything and he goes to 205 yeah. from 160, yeah. you're sitting there saying, dude, the moment you can no longer afford a grand a month or two grand a month you're or enough. you have to get off the cycle you're and enough. then your body shrinks up and you get to the yellow skin and you look very awkward and weird and then now you have to get back on it or – try to filter it out of your body for six months to 12 months, America's about to go through that phase. My dad used to always call it the difference yeah. between style and substance. It's just, you know, substance is, is the difference. You can you can dress yourself up and look mm -hmm. great. You can act like you're rich. You can spend a lot of money on a Ferrari. You can, you can work it out and have a great house, but how much money do you have in the bank? You know, it's the same thing. And how good is this business, really? Are you providing a... A product people mm -hmm. actually really want to use is it making the world better? Well, how's your NFT collection working out for you? I, that, this, this stuff never made sense to me. I, I don't just, even know. I still don't know what it means. I, I never, I never understood. Did you get any of that stuff, or do you no. have an NFT? No, 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 you don't have like a. No. Brand. I bought, I bought one Bitcoin just to see what was going on. Mm -hmm. Some Ethereum, just you know. I was like, let me see what happens. But Did you hold on to it? Yeah, but I okay. never, I never. Your bored eight yacht club I uh, NFT I, 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 ain't I working out. Look at it. Yeah, a lot like, of people. You know. By the way, you know, you're, you're talking about the whole metaverse thing. Did you see the story that just came out? Pretty crazy story about metaverse. Check this out. So, women, 
21 years old, is virtually raped <laughs> by a stranger oh, I heard in that. Metaverse app. Yeah. May 26th, yeah. yesterday, right? Yeah. And you read the story of what uh, uh, direction we're going to. So page three. Uh, let me read this full article to you. Ba, 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 ba. Okay. A woman was virtually read by a stranger in Meta Horizon World's Metaverse app while another user watched and passed around a bottle of vodka. <laughs> New reports claims. About an hour into using the platform, the avatar was sexually <clears throat> assaulted during a <clears throat> disorientating and confusing experience. The researcher said it happened so fast I kind of was disassoci- disassociated. One part of my brain was like, what the hell is going on? The other part was, uh, is in, uh, uh, this isn't a real body. And another part was like, this is important research. Horizon Worlds was uh, released by Meta in December and allows users to gather with others, play games, and build their own virtual worlds. You know, this sounds weird to us, let's just say, right? Because I'm 43 and, you know, okay, I'm, I'm seeing this happening. But this is very real where we're going. Of course. This is the direction we're going, right? So... It's going to be the, the scariest part about this is if this becomes a crime. I was just going to say this <laughs> become if this becomes a crime, yeah. then the way to be able to manipulate crime later on, I mean it just opens it up a little bit too much. Yeah, like well, is there going to be like a now now that this has happened do they go like to court and like does this meta no, person I, go I to don't, jail? I don't think you can do that, but I what I think is interesting <laughs> is that I had somebody say this this is not my idea so I don't want to steal it, but they said anybody who's buying property on the metaverse is kind of a fool because you you can't put a value on an infinite supply of something. The metaverse, you know, what you, a sick point. You know, yeah. there's an infinite supply. There's an infinite what supply. A, All it takes is another algorithm. You know, so guys are selling. A guy sent me a message yesterday saying, "I got a special land for you for sale. If you want, I want I'll make I'll let, let you uh, make the first offer. My number is two point four million. I said, "Yeah, I'm good, bro. You know, I wish you all the best." <laughs> he said this on, about the metaverse. Yeah, he's trying Hilarious. to sell me land for two point four million. Hilarious. A big NFT guy says, "I'll sell it to you for two point four million. This is going to be five million dollar property." Yeah. I'm like, "I'm good." You know, yeah, I'm totally yeah. fine. It's gambling. Yeah, there might be people. I mean, okay, let I me know ask people you this. who have made real money off NFTs of course. and and. But, meta- that, that, but that's all because yeah. that it's it's just like crypto. It's, it's that's all because even though there isn't much of a like if you if you have Bitcoin, if you want to buy a child or a or a a lot of drugs or a nuclear weapon, I suppose Bitcoin would work. But for the most part, there's still not really a. Uh, there's not a real economy that is girding this or undergirding whatever the word is. But I do think that isn't isn't and I'm, I don't know, but isn't Bitcoin and all these cryptocurrencies they are valued because a lot of people are buying them just in case. But by the way, what he just said has led to a uh, research. I don't know if you saw the article on how crypto Bitcoin is matching with what the stock market does. Meaning, the pattern is now whatever the market does, 79 out of 93 days, if the stock went up, Bitcoin went up. If the stock market went down, Bitcoin went down. Did you see that the... That article that was texted to you, did you see that article or no? Kai sent it to us. I don't know if you got it or not. It's a very, I, very... I thought, I thought Bitcoin and uh, crypto was supposed to be an uncorrelated asset. I thought it wasn't supposed to be tied. Did you read this article or no? No, I haven't. Okay, so it shows... Uh, Kai, if you're listening, I don't know if he's listening or not, if he can text it to us, but it matches exactly with what the stock market did. Uh, uh, wow. That article right here. there, Bitcoin is acting like the stock market, and that's not No, that's unusual. not it. That's 2018. Hey, Kai, do you know oh. the article you sent me about how Bitcoin and stock market are correlating? Can you text it to me? Uh, I just text, sent him a text Makes right sense. now through audio. But it shows. So that right there is not a good sign, by the way. Mm. That's not good. Because if it's mainstream? It, or? Yeah, then, it, then it's not good. So then, but the part of it that the Bitcoin community can say it's good is what? Well, guess what? We're legitimate. No, no, no. Yeah, we're not only legitimate. Bring some of the bigger money because it's like it's the same thing as stock market. Bring that in. But then you lose your identity of being, you know, we're we're own, you know, we're we're own libertarian. We've got our own. It goes back to what you were saying, though. It goes back to the fact that, okay, you're saying this is valued at X. okay, but where is the exchange of goods and services? You know, the, the dollar I can understand, even though we have quantitative easing and stuff. But for the most part, you and I decide that, though. The market decides the value of Bitcoin. Yes. And by the way, I'm not a, I'm not a big, I, I have Bitcoin and I have right. Ethereum, but I'm not a guy that's going around telling everybody go buy Bitcoin. Right. But all I'm saying is the market will determine it. What's, what's, what's crazy the last couple of years is that gold is 
gold is no longer what it was because, like, right now, what is the price of gold, uh, uh, a kilo of gold right now? Tyler, if you type in a price of, of gold kilo, what is it right now? 57000 Who wants to guess? 59500 Okay. Oh, that's a lot of money. My price is 61000 Okay. So if it, if it went based on what the market was doing, it should be $100,000. Mm. It should be $80,000. Right. But the patterns of how gold reacts mm. to what happens to the market is not happening. That 1554, Peter Schiff has been saying that's going to be 5000 for 20 years. It's eventually going to get to 5000 So he's eventually going to say, <laughs> I told you I was right, but 20 yeah. years too late of saying I was right, right? Yeah. So there's certain things that's confusing. I think the next two years, you, you almost need the next two years to see what moves, what doesn't. So everyone's going to know if Bitcoin goes one direction and then, you know, interest rates go up, Bitcoin goes up, but stock market goes down. That's when the Bitcoin community right there. Look at that. Bitcoin has been trading with the stock market this year. OK, mm -hmm. uh, uh, what's the day that he has? Did he just text it to you? What's the number of days? Look at U.S. Wow, stock. Crazy, dude. Look at that. Look how close it is. Wow. Look how close but it that, is. But that means people are being careful, isn't it? Doesn't, isn't that because people don't have as much confidence and they want to they link it to something that's been proven to be real for a long time? You mean with Bitcoin or the yeah, stock market? Bitcoin. They're calling it digital gold right now. Okay, go, go to that article. That's the one I want to read. Okay. Can you make it a little bigger? Bitcoin has often been linked to a digital version of gold, which for years has been safe haven asset known as a... Tr uh, thrusty, store trusty, trusty, value, store value. trusty store of value when uh, times have been more uncertain. But the evidence for Bitcoin fulfilling a similar role is hard to find in this year at least. Indeed, the data of 2022 suggests the price of Bitcoin often moves in the same direction as stocks rather than the opposite. Of the 98 trading days we've had so far, Bitcoin and S&P 500 index have moved in the same direction, 73 of them. Wow. That, that, wow. So I want to know what the Bitcoin community says to that. While moving in the opposite direction only 25 times, the biggest moves in the stocks like the U.S. stocks fell 3.2% on my ninth. Also came the largest moves of Bitcoin for the stats nerds. The correlation between the two has been plus 0.53. Interesting. So, How are you processing that? How should it be moving? Differently? It's, so you're not unique. You are the stock market. Mm. You're not unique. You don't. So versus what I would have wanted to see is if the market goes down the next 6 12 months and they raise interest rates i'd like to see if i'm if i'm a pro bitcoin guy i would want to see bitcoin go up i'd want it to go up to 60,000 70,000 80,000 90,000 if it does they have the argument the same way as if gold goes up the next 12 to 18 months because gold is the armageddon sale right the world's coming to an end you better own some gold you know Brian you got to put them put it aside 5% of your portfolio go buy some gold and set it aside but if it doesn't go that way then the gold audience that's selling gold their argument is kind of their own investors are going to be like hey John you told me the last 8 years if the interest rates go up gold's going to go to 5000 it's still at 1550 what the hell is going on well you know what's different about this time they lose the argument well so, let me ask you this yeah Personality types. Who makes more money? Do you think usually pessimists or optimists? Does the pessimist start with money? Do either start with money, or that's a good question? They, but because because I had a meeting with the founder of, with the son of Moody. You know the Moody's family. You ever heard mm -hmm. of Moody's? 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 They're all over the place mm -hmm. in Texas. Mm -hmm. And I had a meeting with the guy, and I went and pitched him an opportunity eleven years ago. I said, "Here's what I think we can do. We can make billions." <laughs> and I was done with my presentation. He says, "Patrick, there's two types of people in the world." There are those that wake up every morning wanting to make their first billion. And there are those that wake up every morning wanting to protect their billions. You're group one, I'm group two. That's <laughs> oh, really? That's great. So, he's so, so in a way, you have to be an optimist to make it. <laughs> to make billion. it, but you, you have to be a pessimist bro. when you that's already great, made it. That's a great So uh, it depends. That's probably it. why you become conservative when you have that much money and you're, <laughs> and you're wild, man, when yeah. you're young. Yeah. If, when you get older, you're like, dude, think listen, about, I Think I, about why. Like, like, think about conservatives. Conservatives are there to preserve what we have. And liberals are there to be like, let's 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 Party. start something new, bro. Yeah, Progressives, they you want should some be progress. a but you, you should be a money too. manager. You'd be one hell of a money man. You'd <laughs> crack up your clients and say, look, you know what? I wasn't going to give you the other twenty million, but here it is. You know, <laughs> yeah. I, I trust You're you. You're going to make no money, but I'll make you laugh. <laughs> <laughs> <You'll make laughs> too me. emotional. <laughs> By the way, are you following the Amber Heard story? Uh, are you it's following? It's my favorite TV show. Really? It's my favorite. Okay, TV so so mm -hmm. so so far, yeah. With all the craziness, you saw. By the way, uh, uh, what's her name? Uh, 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 Camille uh, Vasquez yeah. has officially become a BMF. People are in love with this girl. Thirty-eight-year-old lawyer. Gorgeous what I want to know is 
how the hell did he find her? Like, where did that, that, that show was, up? That was apparently movie. a very deliberate choice because they said that the two lawyers are Same big age. guys. They're guys your size, apparently. Look at, and if wow. you had a big man asking these ter these very hard questions to a beautiful woman oh, who's crying, the? you would look like a bully. So wow. I said, Optics. let's get a very smart, small Small, Are you being sarcastic? No, I'm being serious. What a strategic Let's move. get a very small, Who beautiful Who came up woman, with that idea? The team. When you're Johnny Depp and you get that team, pr I promise you, they're the best. Yeah. I know some of these people, you know, that in Hollywood who deal with this. They, they're... The guys that make it to the top, those lawyers, they they are deep, deep students of hu of, of human nature. So here's my question, though, Pat. How, how does, because, dude, not everybody's defamation. I know it's them, but do they have to agree and, like, it's going to be televised and it's going to be on every single day? Like, what what makes look, that? Look, this this case rests on on the first half of that, the sentence, the first sentence of that of that article. Yeah, I was, I was, I became the face of domestic violence. The, the idea was... You wrote that, and then you orchestrated um, your follow-up plan to essentially destroy someone's career. And the case really is, the lawyer's case is, we are going to prove that everything you said is not true, right? You're making this stuff up. We don't have, there's no pattern of this in his, in his history or anything else. All of a sudden, you came along and said that. I mean, if you listen to those tapes, it's like she's saying, I'm, I can't help it. I get so mad, I can't promise I won't hit you. Yeah, I wasn't hitting you, Johnny. I don't know what my hand. I was didn't doing. punch you. I was hitting you. All that's a big difference. Wait, yeah. So all of us just go. I'm sorry, but mo there's people like why is the why does the internet hate Amber Heard? Well, most of us, the people that don't have a dog in this race, mm -hmm. are, are like, I, dude, I just don't buy it. I don't believe I don't. you. I don't I believe don't. you. The, the letter that you're referring to, she wrote that she was the face of domestic violence. Her, her she, op wrote a, she wrote a, an article for the Washington op Post, or the, yeah. the, the, that that basically said, um, if you look at the first sentence i think it was really about whether or not she was th yeah. this was a defamation I thing i spoke up against sexual violence face our faced our culture's wrath that that has to change and then i was exposed to abuse at a very young age blah 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 blah, blah. The, the, there's a there's a sentence that they're using got it that, that, well Brian, now, you, now you have to prove whether or not everything she's saying is a lie so it's, it's not let, an easy let me ask case. you a question then oh yeah there it is two years ago i became a public figure representing domestic abuse and i felt the full force of our i became a public figure representing domestic right. abuse that's so, where i believe it's hinging on you said that you were abused <laughs> and then you filed a restraining order and and i, I will say this if you rest, if you file a restraining order in los angeles you don't need to go down there personally with your with your um uh, publicist you don't if you file for divorce you don't have to go down there personally you don't do that a lawyer does that for you a clerk does that for you damn so why was she down there you know without makeup on that cheek there was and also if you heard the tmz guy he goes well we have to vet who has the copyright for any video we get and that'll take up to a day or a week in this case, it took 15 minutes because it came from "quote unquote" the source. It was her. F well, it came directly from her. I saw. I mean, that today. that's yeah. what I mean. Come on, yeah. it, if it took 15 minutes, yeah. TMZ was like, "Oh, well, Brian." And if you, we're yeah. supposed to believe all women, well, yeah, except for uh, Ghislaine Maxwell, well, I was just, I, the yes. woman from Theranos. I was yeah. just going to yeah. say, how, this. how are you processing this? Believe all women. How are you categorizing? I that? have a big problem with any of that stuff. Well, any blanket uh, statement. That this. And can this, I say this. one thing though? Look at what Americans love this type of like this trial. Mm -hmm. Where's Ghislaine Maxwell? What happened to that whole? I would rather see that trial than watch this. I, I hate to be that guy. Where's she at now? Where? When's well, the last time you heard of Ghislaine Maxwell? Yeah, no, no, no I know. Where's she at? She, she the, the Depp was the one. Who wanted the cameras in the courtroom? Oh, really? She didn't, and he knew he's this uh. is strategic. By the way, look, man, that guy's a nightmare too. Okay, <laughs> I, I, I don't think he was. I don't think he hit her or did anything. But that guy spent thirty years high, <laughs> high and drunk off his ass. <laughs> nightmare. He and was he, Jack Sparrow in real and life. Dressed buddy. like a pirate all the time. Yeah. You, look, if I came in, bro, with a lace doily around my head. A cowboy hat and fifteen bandanas. You'd go, Brian. I, take it off right now. I'm <laughs> <the shit. laughs> 
<laughs> Come on. But bro, he's an artiste. Have, I know, bro. But you got to have friends who are like, hey, dude, you're, you're yeah. dressed like, you, you know. You have 13 bracelets but on. But that's what, who Johnny Depp is. You're yeah. 60. I, Just because he's yeah. Captain Jack Sparrow drinking rum on, dude, the, on, a, dude, on, a, on he, a pirate ship he's a doesn't mean that he's beating yeah. women. In acting class, I took it for years. In acting, you learn the most important thing, which is what? Learn how to be still. Yeah. Learn to give nothing away. Yeah. Let the worry. audience... I never learned this, by the way. <laughs> not, not even close to the worst student. Let the audience reach for you. Brando. Brando's the first guy who just even mumbled his words. Mm. He went down. Back then, you always had to enunciate. You learned how to stand straight, and you, and you spoke this way. You were an actor. That was very important. Yeah. Brando came along. When he walked on stage in, in, in London, he came on stage, and he was talking like you know, Stanley Kowalski when he was doing Streetcar Named Desire. In London, they thought a drunk stagehand had walked on stage. Wow. They, they were like, what's going on? Oh, my God, somebody's storming the stage. And they realized he was in it. They saw his muscles. And they saw he was actually sweating for real because he used to work out. The first method actor. In London, they were cheer. The, the, the story goes, they were screaming. The women were screaming. Wow. At, when, at, at that curtain call. Screaming. He changed all of it. Robert De Niro. Robert Duvall, all those guys. You know who their hero was? Brando. Brando, of course. Brando. So, you know, the, the, the Depp is a master <laughs> actor, dude. He seduced all of us by barely moving. It takes him a half hour to get one sentence out. One. One sentence. He's like, I, uh, it was, no. <laughs> <laughs> what? That's all he says. We're like, dude, I need to hear more. Yeah, yeah. I love is, it, is it true you had a you had a pint of wine? Yeah, a, no, pint? Goes, a mega pint. A mega yeah. pint. I had a large glass of Yo. wine. I felt it very necessary. <laughs> but <laughs> who's your favorite? Uh, you continue. He goes like this. He goes, yes. You continue to read that correctly. <laughs> He barely raises his voice. How, how much was he spending on wine? He, he even admitted it. Thirty uh, grand a month. Thirty grand a month. That's, that's as much as Patrick Bet David does. Go ahead. Who, who's your uh, <laughs> you, your accents like are amazing? Taste. You do great accents. Okay. Yeah. Who are your favorite people to do these days? I mean, I've always, if I really want to, I yeah. can do you know that's a hacky thing. But yeah, I've always loved Chris Walken. And I'll do Christopher Walken as a pigeon for you. I'm only going to do it once. Okay. This is this is shame. One of my favorite guys, by the way. Yeah. Well, the, the story goes, this is a true story, that he he walked in to my, uh, I think it was, I can't remember, that Randy Perlstein, who was a comic, and he told tells the story, he's telling on stage, so I'm stealing it from him. And he said, walk in, walked up to them, when, and I don't know if it's true, but he, he, was, he was drunk, and he walked up to them, they were all hanging out, and they were all just a bunch of actors who were in this movie called Search and Destroy. And he walks in. And uh, they were all like, oh, shit, Christopher Walken. And he goes, and he's tall. He's about your, that's 6'3", three, 6'4". Six, and he goes, you guys, you know what fame is? Fame is knowing you could walk into a room, fuck anyone in the ass. <laughs> that's fame. And he walked away. <laughs> and they are like... What? <laughs> what happened? And then he's dancing with an actress oh like this. And he's doing this, and apparently he'd oh look over God. his shoulder and go, "The ass." <laughs> <laughs> I hope that story is true, but oh it was the greatest. God. I hope that story is true. The ass. <laughs> yeah. You want to see my impression of Christopher Walken as a pigeon? Yeah, go. This is fucking so cocky. This is my, I should have my comedy license revoked. This is bull. I apologize. I'm defaming you. <laughs> the, it's Chris Walken as a pigeon. Cool. <laughs> Bread. I got bread on my mind. <laughs> Sourdough. Cool. <laughs> Thank you very much, everybody. Thank you very much. Very impressive. Hey. Very impressive. Come on, buddy. dude. That's, oh high, that's high level acting. That's high, yeah. <laughs> that's high I just discredited myself oh completely. My Buy Bitcoin, me. guys. That's yeah. the point I'm trying to make. Oh my god! But by the way, uh, when you when you were in Hangover, it's a bad. Yeah. I, and I know people are gonna be like the shitty walking. Fuck well, off! I wasn't even trying. Yeah, the cat, it was a great walking. <laughs> but, but did you guys party out on when you were in Hangover? Or was it just kind of like work? Was it purely work? Work. All work. Nobody knew that no. movie was gonna be a big deal. You're joking. Bra Bradley, I'd known Bradley and Zach Galifianakis and all those guys. Nobody knew the movie was gonna be. Big. No, Bra Bra I'd known Bradley Cooper for five years before that. I knew Zach Galifianakis for ten years before that. Mm -hmm. It was a little movie. Uh, you know, I was asked to come in, and the, you know, uh, I knew Todd Phillips, the director, and the guy was supposed to be from New York, talking like this. You know, you don't remember me? I'm Eddie. You don't, how, how could you not remember? You know, he's all, he was all, yeah, he's from the Bronx yeah. in New York, 
And I was the one that I said, look, dude, if the, if the dude, and I even said this because you'll appreciate this. I said, if he's in Vegas and he owns a wedding chapel, he should be from Armenia <laughs> or Lebanon or something like that. Yeah. You know, it's, I can get you anything you want, my friend. What do you, divorce. It's, it's a bit div uh, divorce. I can get you right. divorce, guns. I can get you chicks, <laughs> whatever you need, my friend. I can get you wine. So he, he loved that. And that was how it happened. Mm -hmm. But That's when great. we did the movie, bro, it was like, the, you know, I mean, I tell the story, you know, it's it's so funny because Bradley and I were walking through, I think, Caesar's Palace and a group of tourists wanted to take a picture with the guy from Mad TV. What? You want to know who held the camera and took the picture? Bradley? No. Wow. That's that's blue crazy. eyes. Nobody knew him. Wow. It wasn't Well, he was Sack Lodge I, I and remember, Wedding Crashers. I remember when Limitless was the movie they were watching <laughs> mm. to see if he could pull it off, and he did. That was yeah. a great movie. But, that was but, a sick movie. Sick. But that guy. NZT. Yeah. Wow. But he was all, he loves acting. Bradley mm -hmm. loves acting. I just, I just saw, because of Ray Liotta, you mentioned it, I watched Goodfellas last night, probably, yeah. I'm not joking, for the 50th time. And while I was in the gym today, there's a documentary where with Scorsese and the, the writing with Nick Pelleggi, yeah. everything. Yeah. And then uh, Henry Hill, he, uh, the real Henry Hill, he was in witness protection. He couldn't come on the set, but the, he would. Uh, De Niro would call him in yeah. the morning five, six times and go, "Hey, how did this guy hold a cigarette? How they talk? How did he pour the ketchup? How did he?" Mm -hmm. Bro, I, I get goosebumps right now. And then yeah. God rest his soul, dude. I that ever since I was a oh, kid, man. I wanted to be a gangster. Right. Dun, 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 you got your favorite dun. movies? Oh, Goodfellas has got to be one of them. Damn man right. on Fire is sick. Oh. Oh. Uh, oh, Godfather Two, John Q. I mean, you've talked to all uh, these guys, huh? Uh, Sammy the Bull. Sammy the Bull. Yeah, I was yeah, pretty fascinated yeah. with him. He's the only gangster that I was really taken with because he. I knew who he was back in the day because I was in New York then, and he was terrifying, you know. But he just seems like a very intelligent guy who had. If it wasn't for his dyslexia, it would probably be a huge entrepreneur. It would probably be a guy who made a fortune. Like I, I know it's crazy to say this, but I get the feeling that even though he was a killer, he lived by that code of the samurai. He's, I, I look at him as more of a samurai. You know, people who kill people are, you know, gangsters are bad people, right? They just, I don't like it. There's something about that guy. I feel like he, he was just more of a modern day Miyamoto Masashi, like like a like a samurai who lived by the sword and was always ready to die by the sword. That, that's my feeling. I may be wrong. I, I don't know. What was your impression? I mean, Sammy is, uh, uh, till today, he is still, to the core, proud mafioso. No I mean, he'll, he'll tell you, when we spend those three days in the mountains mm -hmm. and we did the Mafia States of America with him and uh, uh, Michael Francis. You spent three days with him? Oh, yeah. We, we had, we, in the mountains. In the mountains. <laughs> in in with, the mountains. With with and that was the one we did with uh, Rudy Giuliani, and we had Chaz Palminteri do the do the narration. Wow, how was yeah. it so bad? Security wise, what's the security? Oh, we like? had to have security. How much? Like bananas, the, nuts. We, they both asked to bring their own people. Uh -huh. and Is that they're, true? They're each the people that they brought on each side. You know, it's like they're they're people. People they brought their own people. Oh wow! So you you have to because I'm asking them to come to the top of a mountain <laughs> at a house that matches oh, wow. identical to the house from Godfather Two. Oh wow! Helicopter comes down. Just yeah. <laughs> yeah. Get down! Yeah, it's, it's oh there you are. Look uh, at this house. It's, it's, it's so, yeah. Oh yeah, they they went at it, bro. They were yeah, working was, with each other. It was a great. Uh, were you uh, nervous about that? That was uh, no, because I've already done a lot of stuff with both of them. I had first time I talked. I called Sammy. It was a, a year and a half after the uh, Michael Frenzy's interview. So I called Sammy. He gets out of jail. I one of my uh, the girls Jessica gets his number, and I call him. I say, Hey Sammy, this is Patrick with David. Who the fuck is this? <laughs> So Patrick Bay David, I conducted the interview with Michael Francis. So you the mother, so you did the interview. You realized Michael wasn't a boss. He was a capo, and I'm an underboss. And he got all technical. Oh. So he went he two was, hours furious about the interview. And then I said, Sammy, just meet with me. He says, no. I said, Sammy, let's just have a meeting. I'd like to interview you. He says, no. The only person that's ever interviewed me is Diane Sawyer. 1994, got 20 million views. I'm not doing any more interviews. Wow. So I said, why don't I just come fly? He says, no. Hangs up. Uh, I said, okay, I'm going to follow up because I'm a sales guy. So I'm going to follow up. I love it, so dude. I followed up, Even followed up, mafia. followed up. <laughs> and finally, who's this? Sammy, it's Patrick. Why are you calling again? And then anyway, so we talked. Finally, you know, he agreed to meet in, in uh, Phoenix. So I fly into Phoenix. And he says, I'll give you an address last minute when you guys get here. So we get an address. We go to this place. And a guy comes to the front. He says, here, let me take you to the back. We're walking, 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 walking. Place gets darker, walking, oh, walking. Oh, God. It's me and Mario. Mario says, 
Pat, is today the last day I'm living? I said, no, buddy, just relax. It's You're never right. going to leave this place. So we get to the place. We sit down, and then Sammy shows up, and he starts talking. And he shakes your asking, hand. He's oh, cool. yeah, yeah. He starts asking questions, but the entire time he's just watching your body language, wow. what you're doing, what you're saying, asking questions, asking Mario questions. Why do you want to do this? What's the outcome of this? How am I going to know this? This is not going to be a hit job. What, what is it going to do? Is, is this come? Anyways, very, very, very sharp. You know, he's done so many sit downs in his he's life a that smart guy. The kind of sit downs that your life depends on it, right? <laughs> Anyways, six months out of that, he agreed. We did the interview. And uh, it, it did very well. And then the, the scariest person, though, that we met with wasn't Sammy. It's two other guys. Frank Collada was one and Sonny Francis. Yeah. Sonny Francis was Michael's dad. He was, like, if you ask Sammy about Sonny Francis, he's the a, level he's of respect. Legit, oh, legit. It's, because if you, Sonny's the one that was, the, the rumor had it that he used to be with Jackie Kennedy. And Marilyn, all the stories that people say about Jackie and Marilyn Monroe, it was a Sonny story. Mm. That's who Sonny was. I mean, there was a massive article done on Sonny, uh, uh, Sonny did 50-something years in jail. <laughs> so we go to New York to meet Sonny at the old folks' homes after he got out of jail. Okay, we go to the hospital to see him. And I go in there with Mario. Sonny looks at me like this. He's looking at me like 10-second pause. He's still looking at me, not moving. Just like this. Imagine somebody looks at you like this. Mm -hmm. And then he looks at Mario like this for 10 seconds. He says... You rat to Mario. You rat or no? He says, you know, 95% of the world, they're rats. You rat. And Mario's like, doesn't know what to say. He's looking at me. He's looking at me like, I'm like, Sonny, he's totally fine. He's a good guy. He's been with me for 15 years. So you're not a rat? No. Okay, good. Well, good, good having you here. Let's go. <laughs> and then we sat down and I was trying to do the interview with him. Tough as sail. Look how he is. Uh, by the way, he died a year ago, a year and a half ago, and that's Michael and his dad. Where right is he, there. right so, in the middle there? Uh, but in the picture, he's the one in the middle right yeah. there. Wow. Okay, look at that face right there. Okay, yeah, that's a guy Some of the it. stories about him, I, it's a myth. I can't even tell the story, some of the stories they say about what, what he did. Anyway, so we go back part two. I got my whole camera crew there. Everybody's there. We're about to do the interview. I'm taking him to the top Italian restaurant to see if he's going to be comfortable. We're driving to the restaurant, and I said, so, Sonny, you know, uh, what do you think about Meyer Lansky? Because he comes from that era. Mm -hmm. Good man. Very good man. I said, really? Was he a billionaire? No. Just a regular man. But he was a good man. So what do you think about uh, Lucky? Oh, phenomenal man. Very good man. I said, the story's about what Lucky did. Never. Very good man. Yeah, that's it. I said, how about that's all you'll get. You'll, said, that's what you'll get. I said, how about Bugsy? You'd never call him Bugsy to his face. <laughs> wow. To you, his Ben Siegel. Very good man. Fine gentleman. Yeah. So I go, how about Frank? You know, so I'm going through all these stories. Now, I, said, I said, Sonny, let's do the interview because if you don't do the interview, the world's going to tell your story. How about you do the interview with me and let you control the narrative? You tell the story. Let the audience go out there and make a decision. Good sales pitch. And he's looking at me like thinking about it. And his lawyer sitting to his left. It was the most uncomfortable lunch because a lawyer screaming, shouting, you know, it's, it's very ugly at, that, at this point. It's like 15 people at this table. We've shut down the Italian restaurant. It's just us. Michael's sitting to my left. His lawyer's there. Our people are here. Everyone's waiting for Sonny to say yes. And then all of a sudden he's like, yeah, listen, here's all I have. All I have that I'm taking to my deathbed with me is I've never ratted anybody out and I'm not going to talk. To anybody. That's why he did 55 years. Yeah. He could only done did like 10 or see, 20 years. Did you ever see a movie called Angels with Dirty Faces with James Cagney? Mm. It's a great movie because it's about it's about one guy who gets caught. They're, they're, they're two juvenile delinquents. One guy gets caught. The other guy gets away from the cops. The guy who gets away from the cops becomes a priest. The guy who gets caught gets stuck in the system. Becomes a gangster. That was the guy from Made It Ma, Top of the World, yeah, right? Yeah, so he becomes a gangster. And the greatest thing about that movie is this. They finally catch him. He's going, he's going to the chair. He's going to get electrocuted. And the priest, his old friend, who couldn't, who ran faster, his old friend came to, comes to James mm. Cagney. And James Cagney's in the jail cell. And he's like, I'll die like a man. I'm not afraid of these, these people. You know, I'm, I'm, I, die like I, I die like I live. I'm a man. And, and uh, the priest comes to him and says, I want you to do me a favor. And he says, what? And he says, I want you to go to the chair like a coward. 
And James Cadden goes, what? And he goes, I don't want you to go to the chair like a brave man because these kids on the street will look up to you. And I don't want them to look up to you. Wow. Let's I go. want you to go to the chair like a coward. And he goes, all I got, all I got is this. That's all I got. And you want to take that away from me in the last moment of my life? You want me to be a go to the, cow- the chair yellow, which was a coward, like a coward? And he goes, I do. And he goes, I'm not doing it. Get out of here. That's all I got. And the priest leaves with his head hung low. And then you see James Cagney being walked to the chair. And it's done. A shadow's on a wall. Gangster. And he's walking. Ah, I got this. I got it. I got this. And he's walking like a man. And like, damn, he didn't do it. And then just when he's going to go, he goes, I can't do it. Uh-huh. No, help me, please. Help me. And I, <laughs> drive, please, I don't want to die. And they have to drag him to the chair. And then you see the kids reading it. And it says, you know, what's his name? Goes to the chair like a coward. And uh, the priest is just watching these kids going, man, I always looked up to him and he went there like a coward. I don't know. Is this really worth it, man? Wow. If that's the, how, you, how it ends? Damn. It's, a, it's called Angels with I Dirty Faces. I want to watch it. And he goes, come on, boys. Let's go have a drink for, for, the, for a kid who couldn't run as fast. It's a great movie, man. But James Cagney at his best there. I mean, how about that? That's what a freaking sick. story. How about that? Dude? Yeah, I mean, that, that's, that's the, but that's what, <laughs> the opposite of what Sonny did. Sonny went, and Sonny went and said, no, this is who I am. Yeah. To the core, by the way. You know, the number with Sonny is 55. You know, Sammy's got 19. Mm-hmm. Sonny's number was 55. Bodies? Kills. People? Yeah. Oh, my goodness. That's the number that you hear, 52 or 55. They can, it's somewhere around the 50s. He died at what, 102? Yeah, 103 and oh, a half. 103 wow. years old. That's how old he was when he died. He did 50. Most, how, how, most why, in jail. Bro. That's why you can ask him about Lucky and Meyer and those guys, because 104 years ago, it wow. was 1918. Imagine that. So, well, you know, I think also, with? I think there might be something to the fact that, you know, people are born gangsters. Sometimes people like Sonny, uh, like uh, Sammy the Sammy. Bull, they're born. What would we do without our bad guys? Mo- movies and life would be pretty boring. What would cops do without our bad guys? Did you ever hear the some story are about bad uh, to their core that way? That story that Sonny told us sitting at the table on the podcast about the guy you that he Sammy kidnapped. Told us. I'm sorry, not, yeah, that, yeah. That, that, that Sammy the, the Bull he told us. Them and the way, yeah. Was that not the most intense story you've One ever heard? One of the most intense stories. Oh, you mean the life. story about the, the guy who was a hitman's hitman? Yeah. He kidnapped and he said, the take guy. my shoes off. Yeah. Exactly. Oh, yeah. Take my shoes off. Yeah. My, my wife will not. Oh, my. Wow. That was the yeah. most intense story I've ever Dude. seen in my life, bro. Dude. That's yes. where you just go. And but I, Sammy the Bull Garano might be the best storyteller I've ever seen, and I'm in the business of telling stories. Yes. You want to talk about a storyteller. And the thing about it is I believe every single word that guy says. That's the other thing that I really appreciate. I'm pretty good at reading bullshit. That's my, you know, I'm an actor. Would I you want to interview him? him? Yeah, I'd love would it. Would you want to have him on the podcast? I would. I'll okay. Be, I would love All right. it. Patrick, I would, really? Or you, you I, want, I really Okay, would. I'll make, I, I I'll really make really the introduction. Really? Yeah. I, I, and Patrick, how do, how do you get, not to cut you off by my bad, how do you get Sammy the Bull's number? How does that happen? <laughs> He's Patrick. Hey, I, you better not oh. rat. Don't oh, be a oh. fucking oh. Hey, you want to ask these freaking I, questions? Excuse me, Mr. Mr. Bed David, I want to apologize for my friend. <laughs> He's, he's a little uh, out of line. Funny, I, mean, I was a little out of funny. line. Being funny, funny how? Unbelievable. Funny how? <laughs> a little disrespectful. Wow. Let me tell you. Let me tell you a real funny story, and then we'll wrap up. This has been a blast. But so we go to a local restaurant here, who's uh, uh, called uh, Casa di Angelo. Mm-hmm. If you haven't been, we got to take you. Okay. okay. You, you're gonna. Lie. I told Joe. I said, Joe, they got the best veal, not veal, best uh, elk. You got to go to this place to try the elk. He says, when I'm out there, we'll figure it out. But uh, so. I'm out to Florida. We moved to Fort Lauderdale. From Boca, we moved to Fort Lauderdale. And first week, I'm going to Casa D'Angelo. This is known as people would go to this place to eat. The owner's name is Angelo. It's purely all Italian. Employees, 80% Italian. Mm-hmm. All of them. Like, from Italy. So, first time I go eat there, I go there with uh, Chaz Palminteri. So, the manager comes out. The owner comes out. Oh, okay. Who's this guy? We go to the corner. We sit there. Okay. Second time I go there, a week after that, yeah. it's with Michael Francis. Like, oh, Michael Francis, hey, you know him. So, okay, we go there. Third time I go there is with Sammy. This is three weeks in a row mm-hmm. I'm going there. So it's Chaz. You remember this, right? Because we yeah, went we together with all yeah, three of them. I was there all three. Right? So we go Chaz. We go Michael. We go. By the way, Chaz's dinner was one of the best dinners of all time. Yes, amazing. You know, amazing. Yeah. I love that guy. So the third one we go is with Sammy. By the fourth one, it was the week that I was on Rogan. I was on his podcast. So on the podcast, I give a shout out to the restaurant, Casa D'Angelo. By the fifth time we went back there, these guys are thinking I'm table. Italian and they're thinking I'm like, you know, <laughs> from made, Italy. Made it's like, no, 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 no. He's a made man. Leave him alone. He's, I said, Listen, you're, you're a Syrian. That's an I'm original Italian. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think? Where do you think the Romans get it? Yeah, from Armenia and Assyria. Yeah. 
Wow. I, t- I tell you what, though, man, the 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 story. Obviously, you're you're you know fascinated by the story, and it never gets old because there's more stories. Yeah, you know when Sammy's telling the stories or Michael's telling the story. Frank Collada, when we interviewed him, I'm in Vegas, and we're staying at the MGM. Mario is setting up the place. If you can pull up Frank Collada, so he knows who Frank Collada yeah, is. So, do you remember seeing? So we walk in. Frank walks in, and Mario says, "Oh, Frank." Uh, we ready? Uh, we have everybody ready here to to do the interview. No, it's, I'll 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 text it to you, so you know who it is. Frank's like, yeah, don't worry. I've been sitting out there for thirty minutes. Who was the guy that came and dropped off the camera and the lights and all that stuff? Tell me who that guy is because that's who I've been watching. Whoa! Holy shit! So Mario's like, oh oh, uh, uh, that, that's that's one of us. You sure he's one of you? That's him, Frank Colada. Okay, don't trust anybody, yeah. bro. Oh, let me tell you. So he walks in. If you've never seen the interview, he walks in. Zero, like hey, zero. Hitch. Cold as ice. When the interview ends, I'm talking to Mario on this side to check to see if we're gonna grab one of the lights or to leave. We walk we look around. He disappeared. Gone. Yeah. Gone. He disappeared. No, no high buy, nothing. He's gone. He disappeared. Yeah. He messaged me a year after that. He says, Hey, I had no idea our sit-down was gonna get these many millions of views. <laughs> nah. He says, My business is taking off in Vegas. Let's do something. <laughs> Couple weeks later, he dies. He oh, just died. Wow. Now, if you what don't know, his, if you, his business in Vegas? so if you don't know who he is, don't ask the jewelry. He stole, he stole jewelry. He's a jewelry. He's a jewelry. He came from Chicago. Yeah, I apologize. He's in he the garbage Chicago. business. What's wrong with you? By the way, Frank Collada. Frank Collada. If you want to know who he is, you ever seen the movie uh, uh, Casino? Yeah, of course. You know who Tony Spilatra is. In the, I don't okay, know. Tony Spilatra is like the Sammy of Vegas. Let's just say, like that guy, like a Phil Leonetti of Vegas. Right. Joe who, Pesci. Who, right. Yeah. So, oh, okay. to, to, so Tony Spilatra. Bad, bad guy. Yeah. Bad, bad guy. But in the movie, if you've seen Casino, remember when they go to the scene where they put the head in a vice and they, they, yeah. the guy that blows up the guy yeah. in the head in the vice? Mm-hmm. That's Collada. That's, That's his move. He did that? That's oh, wow. That's crazy. Yeah, That's Frank Collada. Very bad guy. Very bad. Yeah, qualified those, those bad guy. Those guys are real sociopaths. Yeah. Like, they don't care about He is people. cold like, like you. It. Yeah, cold. By the way, Brian, the, the way that you tell stories, the accents, the things that you, you're going to have yeah. a great time with Sammy if you can oh, set that uh, up. Yeah. The guy can tell stories, and if he didn't oh, I know. end up in that life, he could have been an entertainer, a comedian. That. It's that. I know. I've seen that it. You're in L.A. Right? You're in I'm L.A.? In LA. Okay, yeah. We'll set that I've up. I've seen it, man. I appreciate yeah. it. I'd yeah, we'll set that. Thanks but for having me. If on, you dude, do, if you great. do have him on, you know, set it up for a couple hours. You know, do you oh, know, set it up for a couple hours because no, no. he he makes his own time. I'm not going anywhere. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Gone. Yeah, that's you'll what I'm have saying. him on uh, the fighter and the kid. Oh, I'd love it. Yeah, how often do you do that? Uh, Twice a week. Twice, and it's Twice just you and Brendan. Me and just me and Brendan. Okay, guys. So that would be back. sick. The team's back. That'd be sick. That'd be sick. I don't want to bring up any weird stuff, but I do watch it all the time. And Brendan was just on with Bobby Lee. Yeah. Is that something you're talking about these days? I'm, I'm, I love that guy. Okay, but I've been friends with Bobby forever. I, yeah. I, I spoke to him in a way that was inappropriate. I was mad about something. I was given information. Should have waited on more information. I should have given him the benefit of the doubt because he didn't know what the hell was going on. Mm-hmm. And I, and I called him up and I, I, I own my mistakes, dude. I love I that about you because you're like, oh. this is on me. It is. This is on I me. I didn't know anything. What I happened? didn't see what happened. We. we Patrick I, has no clue about yeah, this. By well, the way. I'll tell you off air, but, yeah. but, but, but it's fine. But, but, um, I love that guy yeah and and i've known him forever and i called him up and i go i apologize he was mad he read me the riot act and i was like you're right when you're right you're right but when you screw up and and you 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 get angry and you don't give your a friend of yours Mm -hmm. like that the benefit of the doubt you deserve a little heat and and but i respect you brian it takes a lot which i i love you for this to because nobody does this shit nobody i own my mistakes the fact that you go i did it because guess what i've been angry angry and in that moment bad information whatever right i've done shit to where if it was the other way i would have punched me and i was given information that that was i should have waited and i should have and i when you have a friend when you have somebody who i like as much as bobby yeah who didn't deserve you got to be able to say you got to ask him Mm -hmm. you got to go hey you know, explain to me, and and I and I was outside of myself, wasn't who I am, made a mistake. You're human. You're he, a human being. He accepted being. my apology. I I apologized. We're good, man. It's mm-hmm. all That's good. That's great. But you know, what's the big lesson you learned through all this? I'm whether it's Bobby or Ricky or who it doesn't. What's the lesson you don't, learned? Don't assume. Give your friends the benefit of the doubt, and you know, make sure you got all your information and your ducks in a row. And even when you do. Mm. Ask first. Yeah. First, don't you know? Go and say, don't "Hey, what's assume. going on?" I, I, it's not like me. It was. Uh, it, there were a lot of extenuating factors. I was given a lot of information. I was defending a friend. You know, 
Brendan's my Brendan's my brother, man. So mm-hmm. so I I I'm very protective of my friends. I'm very loyal. Yeah. But I should have realized I was also talking to a friend, somebody I love very much. Because you've known Bobby's Bobby for how many years? Twenty five years. Great. Right. Longer than Brendan. But he's also he's also a great dude. Yeah. Bobby's hilarious too. Yeah. Well, like, you guys did Mad TV together. Well, we were on. I wasn't on the same thing, but I've known gotcha. him forever, and wow. I've always had nothing but great love and affection. And his for girl him. Kalila, she seems. I, I don't very, know her. I don't. Oh, know you don't her. even know yeah, her at all. I don't know her. But I've she met her seems once. very level-headed, though. I, yeah. I, I don't I, look. I don't have any beef with that. That's not. That's something that uh, was unfortunate. It was one phone call, and uh, and I apologized right away. Yeah. I respect that you own that. Yeah. You gotta I, own your. You were very clear. This is on me. Yes, man. Yep. That's a problem. You gotta these own. Days. You gotta own I gotta, that. I shit. gotta. I gotta. I gotta zoom that they're texting me. I gotta get okay. on. So, but this was this was a blast. This brother. was awesome. Brother, you're freaking awesome, and we had a great yeah. time with you. Thank Looking you so forward much. to. Do- so you said tonight. You're performing Palm Beach and tomorrow. West night. Palm Beach. I got two shows tonight. Two shows on Saturday. One show on Sunday. I don't take the Lord's Day off, dude. Right. Can't stop. <laughs> won't respect. stop. You understand yeah. what I'm saying? Especially how committed you are to your faith. I respect that That's a lot. That's what it is. I give as, it all as an ush- Yeah, totally. It's all, it's what all, an amazing comedy. Man. Jesus. I'm an so athletic. So go comedy. to Palm Beach. Palm West, West Palm, Palm Beach. West Palm Beach. Tonight, Palm Beach. two show. Tomorrow, two show. And then Sunday, he's doing one for the Lord. So uh, again, <laughs> Brian, thanks for coming out, brother. The hilarious, care, guys. Brian. Callen. Have a great thanks, weekend, everybody. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye.